How are we all? Excuse me. <clears throat> How are we all? We'll have the lights on in a second. We're just recovering from outdoors. The brightness is just, ugh, blinding. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Marion. Reality. It would be funny if snarky religious kid actually turned out to be the Antichrist prophesized in Revelations, then he would be the one having the last laugh. That's that's weird. Um What took you so long? Starting early, it's four eleven. Oh my god. Uh well thank you. Smith Black for the $100 and that very apt statement, Lyanna Lu. Although, I think it can still just be Lyanna Wu. It is her, it is her married name after all, I'm given to understand. Alas, there's no theory stream today because we're completing that on Monday for free, but thank you so much. As funny as that would be. Alright, let me pop on the lights. We're starting a bit early, so we're going to cover something else uh, briefly before we begin. You know what I need? I need a clapper. That's what I need. I need to be able to just like... It'll be so annoying when it just goes off by itself randomly. Okay. I'm gonna mute the audio for a second because I don't know if this is gonna play something immediately when I put it on the screen. Okay. Boom. 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 Alright. Let me just review this quickly. Okay, good. We're in the clear. So, no more music. Um, I'm just going to go over this quickly. This uh, happened yesterday, I believe. Um, oh, that's not that's not a good size for that. Here, we'll go with uh. We'll go with this. Police release body cam uh, video showing officer fatally shooting a pregnant woman. Uh, police in Blendon Township, Ohio, released body camera video on Friday showing an officer fatally shooting a woman who allegedly accelerated her car towards the officers after she was accused of stealing from a grocery store. Uh, Takia Young, 21 of Columbus, was seven months pregnant when she died in the August 24th shooting, her family said. Blendon Township uh, police officers were in a Kroger's parking lot assisting a driver who was locked out of her car when a store employee told one of the officers that someone who had allegedly stolen bottles of alcohol was fleeing. Police Chief John Belton said in a statement after the shooting, the, new re the newly released body camera footage reviewed by ABC News shows Young parked in front of the store refusing to leave the vehicle despite repeated orders from police. One officer was on the driver's side while the other was directly in front of the vehicle. The video shows the officer on the driver's side telling Young that she was accused of stealing, which she denies. Okay. The officer again tells her to get out of the car, according to the video, which Young appears verbally to refuse to do. He bangs on the driver's side window as Young appears to ask the officer in front of the vehicle, you going to shoot me? In footage from the officer in front of the car, he pointed his gun at Young and yelled for her to exit the vehicle while using an expletive. The car then accelerates forward, pushing against the officer in front of the car, who then fires a single shot to the windshield, according to the video. The car continues to move forward. Jesus Christ. The officers announce shots fired as they chase the vehicle for several feet before it comes to a stop, video shows. As they chase the car, one officer orders Young to stop the car while pointing a gun at her, according to the footage. The video then shows the officer smashing the driver's side window. 
Officers had to break through the locked driver's window to give Young medical assistance, the police chief later said, adding that they also immediately called EMS and the officer who shot her sprinted to his car to get a trauma kit, which he quickly employed. She later died at St. Ed's Hospital. Officer on administrative leave. Um, second officer also on administrative leave. Neither of the officers were named. Through the attorneys at Walton and Brown LLP, Takia Young's family released a statement Friday following the body camera video release that said it is undeniable that Takia's death was not only avoidable, but also a gross misuse of power and authority. As if the pain of losing Takia isn't enough, we must grapple with the knowledge that her unborn daughter was also robbed of her life in this hateful act. After seeing the footage of her death, this is clearly a criminal act, and the family demands a swift indictment of this officer for the killings of both Takia and her unborn daughter. Let me see if I can't see this. I'm not going to put it on the screen, but I am, I am curious what it is that we're actually looking at here. So this is Blendon. Blendon shooting. I'm not going to put this on screen, so you're not going to see it. Okay, here we go. There, just so you can kind of hear what's going on a little bit. Then, then get out. No, then get out. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Whoa. So. Okay. So. Yeah. So this, it was a very quick escalation from what I'm seeing. Um, the, uh, the woman was being spoken to through the window. And a man, one of the police, the one with the body camera, leans over the hood of the vehicle and holds the gun like this while the other one is, is talking to her. The other one, so there's, there's two officers. I'm, I'm the, the woman in, in, in this orientation. The officer I'm talking to is here, and the officer pointing the gun is ahead of me. So I'm looking here. The officer is up here. Can I see where her face is leaning, or is the uh, is the window too dark? Let's see. Yeah. So this looks like escalation by the police in this case. Um, if the Yeah, if, if the... There's there's a very short period of time between the first officer asking her to leave the car and the second one drawing a gun and leaning over the front of the vehicle to aim it at her. Some people might panic under those circumstances. That's, at the very least, extraordinarily dangerous. So, one of the things that this article doesn't highlight... Um, so, when it says this here... The newly released body camera footage shows Young parked in front of the store, refusing to leave the vehicle despite repeated orders from police. One officer was on the driver's side while the other was directly in front of the vehicle. What this makes it sound like when it says repeated orders, in your brain you go, oh, there was a period of time transpiring in which she was asked to leave the vehicle and she refused. She refused to comply. And then, after being aggravated, I suppose, she accelerated her vehicle. However, the actual process takes place over the span of seconds. So... That's that's not good. Um, it, it, it there's a distinct possibility that a person in this situation has not stolen and makes the very unwise decision to resist or to flee due to panic. 
because it's a very stressful situation that is suddenly escalating. You have a gun pointed at you. The person is directly threatening to kill you. If you have somebody pointing a gun at you, some people respond in an irrational manner to that. Moreover, um, it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to particularly matter. The 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 stakes should not have been raised to the level of uh, comply now or we'll execute you. Presumably she has a license. Presumably she can be identified. Um, why why would at, at this juncture, if if she was to remove herself from the parking lot, why would not the arrest take place? Under, under safer circumstances, why would you put yourself in front of the car and and aim a gun through the windshield? That just seems extraordinarily reckless. Like, it, it's distinctly possible. At, at the point of seeing the gun through the windshield, that's when she had the reaction to, to flee. Like, maybe that freaked her out. That's possible. I don't know. We'll never know stupid <sighs> they can't let criminals just wholesale flee with no retribution well I'm I'm not suggesting that they they have to let criminals wholesale flee with no retribution um, the issue I'm having is not with them arresting this person. The issue I'm having is with them uh, shouting expletives at her through the side window and then another officer leaning over the hood of the car with a gun. Um, I'll, I'll show you, like, the still here so you can see what I'm talking about. It's, it's kind of insane. So they don't actually show anything too explicit, which is fortunate. So I, I can actually show you this. It might get demonetized, but that's fine. Um, I'll mute it. So, like... Watch, watch how quickly this, this progresses. So this entire segment is, is seconds long. Okay? So look. Officer approaches the window. Walks around to the front of the vehicle. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Gun out. Six. Seven. Like, and, and right there. Just reaches over, leans out, pulls a gun, puts it into her face with the windshield. That's, that's not going to precipitate... That's going to precipitate an escalation in almost, in almost every case. That's going to cause panic. Like, that's, that's, that's a weird progression. It's a weird progression to go immediately from... Uh, the the woman is refusing to get out of her car to leaning over the hood with a gun aimed at her face. You know? Call me crazy. That that doesn't seem like the 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 intelligent next step. Um, like you you you've seen footage of sovereign citizens refusing to get out of their vehicles. What do the cops do first? They'll they'll break the window, for example. They'll like they'll baton the glass open. Why is aiming the gun through the windshield your your immediate next step? Vehicles are very dangerous weapons. But the reason why I'm I'm highlighting this is because if she panics, if she sees a gun through the windshield and she panics, I don't know what she does in that case. Maybe she steps on the gas. It's a possibility. She could have followed orders and not ran over a cop. That's if she's responding rationally, right? The The reason why I have an objection to the gun being held in her face is because that's going to cause someone to enter into a very high state of stress, and you can't always predict what someone's going to do under those circumstances. She could have had a gun. She, she could have had a pipe bomb. What's your point? Like, if... if, if if the level of community engagement is literally every single person could have a gun, therefore when you accost anyone as a police officer in advance of determining innocence or guilt at all, you immediately cause an escalation in which an innocent person might panic and cause someone to die, there is a methodological flaw in your approach. 
this is not typical of, of everywhere in the world. Most most cases of shoplifting don't escalate this way, even if um, even if the the person flees. That's a fair criticism, but it looked like she was accelerating by the time they aimed. What? Did it? Hang on. Maybe I maybe I missaw. Let's see. Let's see. Even so, jumping in front of the vehicle with a gun aimed through the windshield is, is not the correct decision. We'll know by watching the proximity of the officer to the window. So let's see here quickly. She's turning. She's... Okay, there we go. So she's turning the wheel. She is accelerating a little bit. Okay. I'm not seeing a justification for putting a bullet through the windshield. Okay, so she is already accelerating first. So my mistake, I didn't see the movement. We're still in a situation, though, where it's it's like... Wh why are you putting a bullet through the windshield? Um, of an already moving vehicle when, when you put yourself in front of it. Like, it, it seems to me that the reasonable, reasonable thing to do in this case is take the license plate down, get in your vehicle, follow her, arrest her when she stops. Arrest her at home. Or arrest her on the way. You know? Like... I don't know. Uh, thank you, Insomniar, for the $5. This is when Fight, Flight, Freeze response kicks in. Her brain literally circumvents higher level cognition for the sake of survival. Well, the it's tricky, though, because it, it does seem like she was moving first. So we have, to, we have to look at the footage carefully, right? Okay, but... Okay, here we go. So... When does the gun come out? Man walks in front of the vehicle. Turns wheel. Pulls out gun. Has not accelerated yet. Car has not moved. Because the the only there's only one of there's only one of two outcomes to this, either he moves and his standing there was meaningless. Or I guess it's three outcomes. Uh, he shoots and kills her, or he gets run over. So I don't I don't know why he was I don't know why he was there. That's just confusing. The only danger was the cop with the gun. That's not entirely true either. Like it, the the person with the vehicle is is dangerous. This uh, es escalates into, like, a high-speed chase, which the police probably shouldn't be engaging in anyways. There's a reason why you have license plates, is so you can be identified um, without having to be uh, tracked personally from, from place to place. Anyways. They are detaining her. She is not meant or supposed to leave at this moment. The officer is making himself a the officer is making himself a barrier. A barrier to what? He's not a barrier to a vehicle. That's stupid. Either she's going to comply, in which case the vehicle is not going to move, or she's not, in which case his body is not going to form any kind of barrier. Did they actually determine if she even stole anything? Police previously said a grocery store employee had notified officers that a woman who had stolen bottles of alcohol was in a car parked outside the store. I'm not seeing any uh, any indication that they've confirmed that she was even stealing, which is interesting. Anyways, a cruiser parked in front does the same and is inanimate. That's true.
officers didn't know if she was under the influence while I put other people at risk. Officers don't know if you're not under the influence. Any officer watching you walk by, maybe you stumble, maybe you walk in an odd way, maybe you're dressed in a little bit of a, a, an unkempt fashion. Maybe some rando just wants to play a prank. Hey, officer, he's got a he's got a knife in his pocket or something like that. What you're just what you're doing in this in this context is you're saying that well on on the basis of the endless paranoia of someone who has put themselves into the position of an armed thug on the street for 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 cash, um, they can they can essentially summarily execute somebody if in their imagination uh, they they perceive a sequence of events that leads to their their endangerment. That's that's what took place here. I, I, I can't I can't see this person's face in this footage. Maybe there's a, a clearer version of it. But I can't tell here, let, let's let's watch again very very closely. So let's see. Okay, so she walks in front. I can't I can't see I can't see her eyes. She's I can see she's looking to the side. I can see her turning. And she's probably trying to turn away from the officer. She's probably not trying to run the officer over. The officer is very much to the side of the vehicle. So, yeah, the, the officer is is like is like in front of the um, in front of one of the headlights. He's not like dead center. We're not we're not talking about somebody shooting at a woman because she started driving at an officer. She's turning away. From the officer at the window. It, it, it gets incredibly messy. The point is, like, this is how the story probably would have ended if he hadn't pulled a gun and stepped in front of the vehicle like this and, and hadn't shot the windshield a woman who was dri driving away. Um, we, we don't have evidence that she was actually shoplifting in the first place, but either way, the point is they're in the dark about this. But here's what could have happened. Um, they take her license plate down. They probably already did. Um, she drives out of the parking lot. They follow her home. She gets charged with uh, not complying with a police officer, with resisting arrest. And, and that's it. And now you don't have um, potentially ho however, however many protests in response to in increased police brutality, brutality in, in this region. You don't have um, police now uh, potentially guilty of manslaughter. You don't have a dead mother or, or whoever else. Because that's something else too. Um, she's driving her car forward, right? At the point where she's driving her car forward, if you shoot her, that's not going to take her foot off the pedal necessarily. In that moment, though, it's very hard to factor in if she's turning away. Yeah, but that's why you don't put a human body as a barrier in front of a vehicle. They can't possibly hope to stop it, because there's only two ways that situation ends. Yeah, anyways. Ugh. <sighs> Things like this will happen at, at this rate. Like, I, I think you don't have to excuse the woman for resisting arrest to say that the, the police activity in this case was incredibly reckless and dangerous. Um, moreover, uh, like, one of the things that the, the police do in America, which... They, they do here as well, but a little bit less so, um, is they will, uh, for example, use extremely strong language when they're arresting you. They will cuss at you. They'll, they'll act like psychopaths. They're not really capable of de-escalating. Their, their strategy is to terrorize you into compliance. The problem is people don't choose the reasonable and rational course of action when they're in a state of terror. Especially if there is a... a and, and there are people who argue about whether or not this is a positive thing as well. So, for example, um, in that uh, Vosh is Unironically Evil video that, um, let me make myself bigger while I'm talking, that that Doomer politics shithead uh, made, he uh, blamed uh, Vosh for Kenosha because he talked about how um, the, the uh, uh, quote-unquote, fear-mongering about police brutality against black people has caused a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy in which People are now terrified of the cops, and so they react in a way that is not compliant with the cops because they think that's in their best interest. Whatever the case may be, if that's your line of argumentation, if, if that is the case, for instance, now you have a situation where, whether or not you think it's justified, you have people who are conditioned to be extraordinarily skeptical of 
the 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 positive outcomes of compliance with the cops. Maybe maybe uh, if you shift, maybe if you comply, but you shift in a little bit of a wrong way, or you cough or something, or you just look a certain way, maybe you'll get bullets planted in your chest. Like that's that's the that's that's the rumor. So yeah, that that video was garbage. It seems silly, but yeah, it is normal procedure even in other countries to put yourself in front of the vehicle to make known you are go no further and gauge whether the person is willing to harm to do harm. I understand that, but you don't lean over the car with a gun held like this. You see? That's that's where I take issue. I'm gonna grab some water and then we're gonna get into the uh, the 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 proper part of the, the stream. So just hang tight. Here we go. This is Branabu's history of lies and scandals. Let me just zoom this in a little bit. And I haven't seen this yet. Although it was randomly playing on my television because I had it queued up, so that was kind of weird to, to walk into earlier before stream. Um, but I've been reassured it does not go into anything too personal. It doesn't have anything identifying, so it should be safe to cover. Um, I don't necessarily endorse the video, but we'll, we'll see what the contents are like. My history with Queeman and his Ilkar is known. Let's just see what we've gotten ourselves into here. I'm going to, where would I be best, where would I best put my camera? Down here. Be a little bit bigger. Uh, I can probably be a bit bigger. Let's see. You know, we'll just we'll stick up here. I think I think up here should be safe. If I have to move around to see documents or whatever, we'll do that. But anyways, this is Brianna's history of lies and scandals. A retrospective deep dive into Brianna's history of lies and drama during one of the biggest Controversies in internet in internet the internet history can't even speak, including her run-ins with Total Biscuit and MDE. Who's MDE? Anyways, let's let's get on with it. Brianna Wu's online and career history is a tangled mess of dramas, deleted posts, impossible to verify claims, and outright lies. It's a weird stage, what is that? It's like a, it's like a ramp. Much of this research has relied on the internet archive, as it seems there has been a concerted effort to hide evidence. Regardless, I want to try to deep dive into Brianna Wu's claim credentials, life experience, and contested details of her activity in Gamergate, and finally, her political career. To provide context for what we're seeing now, she re-enters this side of the internet. Obviously, anyone who knows anything about Wu will be aware that a lot of the info about Wu requires some dead naming and light transvestigation to fully prove. I will be trying to respect Wu. Okay, transvestigation. There we go. So we we, we get we we get the tenor of this already. Wu's attempt to leave her pre-transition identity behind in this video and omit mentions of her dead name. However. Should details of this video be seriously questioned, I may provide a supplementary update video or document 
more concretely links pieces of information to woo. Okay. <sighs> Here we go. Thank you, Rick Sire, for the 499. I appreciate it. Looks like a natural history museum display. Oh, you mean the ramp? Yeah, maybe. All right. So why why am I even interested in this? Um, on a certain level, I'm not. My principal issue with Brianna right now um, is that she has recently taken it upon herself to posture as a pragmatic voice of reason um, in the left, as, as a pragmatic voice of reason in, in representation of the trans community and so on and so forth. In the course of doing so, she has decided to make it her mission um, to convince people that anyone who isn't, anyone who has an identity a little bit more unorthodox, let's say, than a strictly trans medicalist understanding of what a trans man or a trans woman is, um, they are simply too weird to have their rights advocated for. They should be tossed aside in an attempt to appeal to the better nature of the people on the right, um, in the hopes that at some point in the future, uh, given, given the inevitable success of, of reasonable moderate leftism following from this purge, uh, they will get, they, they will benefit indirectly from that. They, they will, they will reap the rewards later of the, the more pragmatic minds who have decided to cast them aside now for the sake of their freedom in the future. Um, to justify this incredibly arrogant posturing, um, she will endlessly cite her political experience and past accomplishments in every conversation in which she takes part, as if she is constantly in a never-ending job interview. The reason why I am interested in this breakdown of her career and past in this particular way is because I have not actually taken it upon myself to really parse through the details of what that experience actually is. However, to the extent that I have a little bit here and there, um, I've, I've gleaned t basically two general, general facts about that, that characterize her history. Um, the one is that she has a established pattern of jumping from thing to thing, industry to industry, cause to cause, platform to platform, in a desperate attempt to make herself famous, gets bored, develops a reputation of abusive interactions with people in her milieu, abandons it, and then recycles the process elsewhere, restarts the cycle elsewhere. Um, whether this is uh, going into uh, get, getting a $200,000 uh, gift from her parents to do political cartoons and, and attend university, doesn't graduate for 10 years, um, claims afterwards to have graduated, claims afterwards to have a degree in various venues, um, is, is called out on this by one of the, the worst actors in the last six years, unfortunately. Um, uh, or or uh, takes an exorbitant amount of time with an exorbitant budget to produce a terrible, terribly produced uh, game. That in itself isn't a crime. But then also we start to see reports of abusive interactions between her and coworkers and, and people she has employed over the course of that. Um, by the way, that game we played last night... I, I misspoke. The budget was not $5,000. That was the budget of porting it to PC. The budget was $400,000. To put this into perspective, if memory serves, the budget for Amnesia the Dark Descent was something like $350,000. It's crazy. Um, so what we're dealing with here is a, a beneficiary of nepotism um, who is attempting to buy her way into fame and influence, which by itself I don't really care about. That describes a lot of people in the sphere, but then is using that and the history of her doing so in the past to advocate against the interests of a large part of the trans community. That's perverse. And it's really perverse that a lot of people, a lot of large figures who are supposedly also advocating for the trans community are, are letting this person in. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. 
Wu's credentials are a mess to investigate. He has made numerous contradictory claims. So I'll just start by running down a few claims and then provide the facts once we've established the statement she's made. As early as 2009, Wu made IGM posts claiming to have a degree seemingly as a way to... Hang on. Let's see this. Um... Okay, so 2009, January 15th, this is a long time ago. So Space Cat Girl is her, uh, is, is what she goes by on the internet. Um, I think it's what she goes by on Twitter. It's, I think it's also the name of her uh, game company, Giant Space Cat. So this person called Berserk says, Laughing at the first few posts, which are people in the 360 forum whining about the fact that you enjoy your 360 more than the PS3. In the 360 forum for 360s. Loving the use of the word Mercs will be Urban Dictionary shortly. Personally, I have probably enjoyed the 360 and the games it has more than any other system I've owned, but I do get that it's personally personal preference, and it overwhelmingly comes down to which games do you most enjoy. Sorry, this like burned me going down really hard. <clears throat> and she says, yeah, fanboyism isn't so attractive. One thing I learned while getting my degree, there we go. One thing I learned while getting my degree is that psychologically people often decide how they feel about and then arrange reality to fit the conception they wish to have. Oh boy, indeed. <laughs> All right. I mean to have a degree seemingly as a way to boost credibility of her opinions about a variety of topics. From the really puts her defense of erudite in a different perspective, doesn't it? The psychology of processing information, the copyright law in 2011. We made a post claiming to have a double major in journalism uh, okay, it, it would help whoever wrote, whoever, like, put this slide together to make it visible. Um, based on my undergraduate degree and my knowledge of American copyright, okay. Is this, is, is there, like, a... I mean to have... Oh, this is so annoying. I can't see the whole document. A degree. Seemingly as a oh, no, no, oh, it is the same document. Okay, wait, no, no, there was another document that it flips to. Her opinions about a variety of topics, from the psychology of processing information, the copyright. Here we go. I also want to say, based on my undergraduate degree, law. and my knowledge of American copyright law, we may is, am, am I, am I, like, brain dead? Is that the same, is that the same document? Hang on. No, there's another, oh, God damn it! I can't read the second thing. Okay, but based on my undergraduate degree and my knowledge of America, okay, well, she's still, it's, it's a claim to have a graduate degree, an undergraduate degree, but I need to, I need to be able to see this so I can see it in its context. God damn it. 2011, we made a post claiming to have a double major in journalism. My degree is in journalism and poli sci. Okay. Journalism and political science. Additionally, a Boston Globe inter I can't see the preceding word. I don't know if that's, if, like, maybe that says her ongoing degree in journalism and political science. I need to be able to see that. Hang on. Is somebody angrily sending it to me? Ugh. What is this? Okay, anyways. All right, I need I need to be able to see that document. I need to see the whole thing. Interview also claimed that she was a graduate. Graduate University of Mississippi. We worked briefly in Washington. People are going to hate me, she said, but I worked. Well, I didn't know that. I should work for the Republicans. Of the University of Mississippi, but her major is not specified. At one point, this was even listed in her Wikipedia page. That's true. This is this is the reason why um, it was Miley Yiannopoulos who who broke the. Uh, who broke that she didn't actually have a degree. Which is deeply unfortunate. Deeply unfortunate. Either has since been corrected to better reflect the truth. This truth was revealed during her public spats with disgraced journalist Milo Yiannopoulos, who ran a check on Wu's education. And when he released the result, people found out that Wu had been lying to the public about her degree. What is this? Oh, god damn it. You need you need to remove the last name too. Anyways, no degree. In investigative journalism, political science, and whatever other degrees she's alluded okay. to. The reality of the situation was that Brianna Wu attended university for 10 years, yet never graduated. Milo's reporting on Wu will become briefly relevant again later. In 2014, 
we made a series of claims about her parents and upbringing. I specifically want to zero in on this one set of tweets because they follow a common theme, outlandish, extravagant ambitions that become catastrophic failures. It's a maiden name? No, I know it's... Okay. I get it. But it's... The problem is it's going to be treated as a trail of breadcrumbs. That's that's the issue. It, it's fine. Wu states that at age 20, she was given $200,000 by her parents to start an animation business. The studio was called Socially Unconscious Productions, named after Wu's late 90s university newspaper. Oh, I see. Okay. That's why the characters in uh, Revolution 60 look so weird. It's based off of her cartoons. Okay, that makes sense. Bad decision, but it makes sense. Comic strip, which the animation studio was founded to produce an adaptation of. Just to add weight to the idea, this is in fact Wu's comic strip, as it was produced under a different name. Seeing this forum post anyway, dog? Oh, here we go. Okay. Alright, here's, uh, here's the second one. This is the one we were missing from before. Um, I also want to say, based on my undergraduate degree, So here we go. Based on my undergraduate degree and my knowledge of American copyright law, I'm quite sure it's infringement. Okay, that's one of them. What was the other one? Oh, here we go, okay. I've never taken a class in Art Illustrator, Maya, PS. Well, you've definitely never taken a class in PS. ZBrush or anything that's kept me employed my whole life. My degree is in journalism and poli-sci. There you go. I also think that formal education is sort of a false god to a certain extent. I'm not anti-education, I just don't think it's a singular path. I see a lot of 20-year-olds in Boston going into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt for undergrad degrees. I think for a lot of the Harvard people, it's a rational bet. For the BU kids, though, I think they're being marketed a bad product. I don't see why state school is that much worse a product for its cost. If my comments toward Mississippi are a little harsh, I'm not trying to be an asshole, I do apologize. It wasn't a good place to grow up for a tall, socially inept computer nerd debt. I probably harbor more resentment than is useful. Okay. Alright. Well, we have the we have the dock at least. Name. You'll notice striking similarities between the comic strip and Brianna Wu's game, Revolution 60 story of this comic strip and animation studio, The Wild and Modeled Ride. There are even claims of a restraining order against Wu. Um. What year is this? This is 2010. Turns out a year prior, Wu came in wanting to DM to run a comic strip that Wu was doing. When told they weren't interested, she wasn't interested, she flipped out, she called one of the workers. What? What the hell is this? Okay. As a result of a racist tirade in response to her having a comic rejected. Made by a Mississippi student who reported being part of the same student newspaper. I mainly want to focus on Wu's out. Was that ever confirmed? That's weird. That's yeah. There, it's 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 the it's the source. The one of the one of the problems here. Sorry, I didn't realize that was in here. One of the problems with this is that the at the time when all this was going down. The people who were Wu's antagonists were people of, like, the Milo Yiannopoulos and Sargon of Akkad variety. So you have things like that. But that's... What I read there is bad. I'm, I'm assuming there's no there's no corroboration for that. Otherwise, we would have heard something about it. Because that's, like, beyond the pale. But that's... I didn't hear about that. Quite lies. And a resume she published online. Now, it's obviously no... Stepped out for a bit. How's the vid so far? It's a mixed bag, to 
put it gently. Crime to talk yourself up on the resume. However, Wu took things a step further with outright falsehoods, which helped to further establish a pattern of lying to bolster her credibility. First, Wu claims that the comic strip was syndicated to other newspapers, but no record of this could ever be found. Second, Wu. Socially unconscious has taken many forms over the years, originally starting as a student comic strip at the University of Mississippi. It was. Can't read that. Soon, oh, soon, syndicated to other college newspapers. As computers allowed more and more sophisticated work, the art of the series was constantly evolving. After I invented and patented a new digital animation technique, plans were put into place to develop the comic strip as an animated pilot. The film cost $150,000 to produce and took up the better part of two years. What's the, what's the technique? Okay. Oh claims to have patented new animation techniques for the socially unconscious movie, which again could not be verified. We also claimed a comic strip was published in the Laugh Factory magazine, which featured articles from some of the greatest comedians of all time. Yeah, I'm not I'm 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 treating that that earlier comment about her throwing slurs at somebody for not accepting her cartoon as apocryphal pending some pretty definitive evidence because that's a really strong claim. Like, if you're gonna make that, I want to see, I want to see writing. I want to see like a witness report, or I want to see video. And and frankly, even the witness report, I'd be a little bit skeptical of. I'd be quite skeptical of actually, because that's a, that's a big claim. Someone apparently claims to to have gone to the same school, I suppose, and was somehow aware of this. I I I don't know. It, it doesn't. From what I've seen of Wu, and I have a lot of issues with Wu, that doesn't seem like her style, but I have no idea. I'm just, I'm, I'm not treating that as a true statement unless I see something else to corroborate that. What is this? Eddie Murphy, what? I don't know what this is. Such as Eddie Murphy and Larry David. Unsurprisingly, this also could not be verified. In fact, the latest records of the Laugh Factory magazine that I could find were dated in the mid-90s. Hang on, I need to hear that again. What did, what did you say? magazine which featured articles from some of the greatest comedians of all time such as eddie murphy and larry Day. okay sorry so the the magazines that she claims her cartoon was published and then featured articles but she does talk about her famous friends a lot david unsurprisingly this also could not be verified in fact the latest records of the laugh factory magazine that i could find were dated in the mid-90s implying that it may not even be possible for Wu's claims of her strip being published in 2001 to be true more recently Wu has claimed new times here again also we also uh, sorry this is he's talking sure very, very fast some of the greatest comedians of all time such as Eddie Murphy and Larry David unsurprisingly this also could not be verified in fact the latest records of the laugh factory magazine that I could find were dated in the mid 90s implying that it may not even be possible for Wu's claims of her strip being published in 2001 to be true more recently Wu has claimed a new title which is that of a cybersecurity expert to survive I had to believe in myself I didn't come back on my own. I had a lot of help. Eventually, I became a software engineer and cybersecurity expert. You became a, what does that mean? Cybersecurity expert. Obviously, she has no real educational training in this. Well, she says software engineer here, candidate for US Congress. Brianna is a software engineer, entrepreneur, and women's rights advocate running for US Congress. Head of development. I don't think software engineer is one of those titles that you need to have a degree to claim, though. I think it might be justifiable on the grounds of having been the head of development for Giant Space Cat. So I don't, I'd have to look into that. I guess the question would be if she was claiming this title before working on, on that thing, because that, that would be strange. There's no job role listed in her LinkedIn page that might corroborate this, nor have I seen it mentioned anywhere else. Like, for example, my father was a software engineer. Um, he, he didn't have a degree, but he was very proficient in it. He, he was developing apps for um, the better part of, I think, how old was he? He was working professionally for about 30 years in, in software development. So, like, I, 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 if, she's, if she's working as, as a software engineer in this case... This isn't like a, a title where it's it's something you can only sort of claim by by the name of, of the job itself. Um, 
or or something that you necessarily need a credential for, unless I'm mistaken about about this one in particular. So that one seems like a bit of a stretch. It's it's conceivable that she has justification for calling herself a software engineer. Does that make sense? Software engineer is just a job title for coders. She didn't code. Do we know she didn't code? Like it might be it might be uh. Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you there. I don't see any evidence that she's a cybersecurity expert. That's bizarre. Um, but the, the software engineer thing, if she, she even says she didn't code, did she? Brooks, can you corroborate that for me? I'd never say I was a software engineer. Um, I guess my father didn't either. He, he was a computer analyst. But we'll... Uh, Read what she said she did. Um, so let's see here. Uh, my goal is straightforward to produce the most gorgeously animated story driven experience on iOS to date. I hire and manage voice actors, animators, technical artists, modelers, programmers. There's two, two M's there, Brianna. Voice actors and other positions. I'm also proficient in many other areas of development, including creating environments, textures, normal mapping. I don't know what that means. Unreal, producing complex cutscenes, and producing voice acting. Um, I, I hope to God you're not editing text documents, because good lord. Well, listed in her LinkedIn page that might corroborate this, nor have I seen it mentioned. True. Ingenitrist versus ingenitrician. Anywhere else. You definitely need a degree to call yourself an engineer. Okay. Here, let's see. Um, yeah, okay. If somebody finds me, like, her claiming to not code, that would be useful. Because that, that would be pretty definitive. Understanding Wu's place in the Gamergate controversy of 2014 is key to understanding Wu as a person. Wu has a history of lying to drum up attention, making grandiose promises she cannot fulfill, and abusing whatever power she can obtain through connections or money for her own self-interest, regardless of who it hurts. I'll go over some of the highest profile dramas Wu chose to be a part of around this time to establish this pattern. Yeah, that's that was my understanding too, Brooks. I don't, I don't think you need a degree to call yourself a software engineer. Behavior. Wu first began inserting herself into the controversy when she claimed on a podcast she was receiving harassment. This was on the 8th of September 2014. What am I looking at here? Is this just the this is the podcast episode? Oh, this is the podcast episode, okay. Harassment. This was on the 8th of September 2014 and seems to give no inciting incident or evidence of these claims. I had an hour-long discussion today with Amanda at Giant Space Cab because we don't know... We don't want to be the victim of this. This week, I have had so much harassment on my Twitter. It has been blocking 50 to 100 people a day, just constantly. This is strange as, and you will see this as I go on here, that Wu does not miss an opportunity to signal boost the people making threats to her. It also contradicts her interview in the Boston Globe, which claims that the harassment started on October 9th after she made a joke tweet, which tweet this was is unspecified. I got into video games to make video games, but Wu was thrust into the spotlight on October 9th when she tweeted what she intended as a joke. It mocked members of a shadowy and threatening gaming movement called Gamergate, ridiculing them for, among other things, fighting an apocalyptic future where women are 8% of programmers and not 3%. Let me hear this again. I had an hour-long discussion today with Amanda at Giant Space Cab because we don't know... We don't want to be the victim of this. This week, I have had so much harassment on my Twitter. It has been blocking. Okay, this week. So we need the date. What's the date of this? September 8th, 2014. Okay. Not a podcast. She was receiving harassment. This was on the 8th of September 2014 and seems to give no inciting incident or evidence of these claims. I had an hour long discussion today then, with the specified so October 9th after so a month later okay a little under a month later there's wiggle room in there um 
like it, it's it's possible that this was a gloss like after after a period um and in, like maybe there was uh a certain degree of you know n negative attention that that her and her team are receiving and then she tweeted something and that caused an escalation so that's conceivable um it's it's conceivable that well actually that's 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 kind of it so if this if if she's saying that um but this is indicating this is when she was thrust into the spotlight presumably if she's on a podcast talking about the harassment of her team that's that's a spotlight in and of itself i don't know we'll see maybe there's something more definitive I can see ways to wiggle around this. That's my, my principal issue. Additionally, um, one of the, the problems with this line of... The, the preceding line of critique is that, yeah, it's true. You don't want to signal boost people who are harassing you, because especially in the media, because that will encourage them. That will trigger an intensification. But then the immediate retort is, oh, so you demand of her to be a perfect victim or something like that. Um... It arguably suggests a certain naivety about her when it comes to handling politics on social media and, and the politics of optics and so on and so forth, which is what she positions herself as an expert in to tell you that if you have like non-binary pronouns, for example, you're just too weird for the, uh, you're, you're, you're just a weird minority for um, uh, leftist activism to, to risk defending and by the way you're also probably all uh secretly just cis people who are trying to get clout in the first place that's li literally what she said um it's 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 unreal but the the critique itself doesn't really wash as uh, a sign of of insincerity it, it may make you in a certain ungenerous key suspicious but i don't think that's sufficient by itself but the timeline here is odd so attributing it to a tweet that may be inconsistent unless there are degrees of difference or there are perceived degrees of difference in the level of attention and, and harassment in between those two points. So there's not really a whole lot you can do with this. She made a joke tweet. Which tweet this was is unspecified. Subsequently, Wu announced a parody. Well, it's exactly, Connor. I can understand why someone might act really stupid when it's their first time being the target of a harassment campaign. Precisely. Um, it, it's like, it's possible. It's, it's possible there was dishonesty about this, but we have no reason to think so. I decided 4chan are the only ones that can make sock puppets with their bullshit agenda. Meet trait. Okay. Count the mock 4chan users with bro lols, regardless of your take on how widespread harassment during Gamergate was, which according to Brandwatch, a social media analytics company, was a vast minority, with only somewhere between 4 and 10% of tweets at Gamergate's so-called targets being of even negative sentiment, let alone harassing in nature. Here, hang on, what is this? This is, a uh... Which, according to Brandwatch, a social Brand media Watch, analytics okay. company... Was... What am I looking at here? Okay, I see. Hmm. ...vast minority, with only somewhere between 4 and 10% of tweets at Gamergate's so-called targets being of even negative sentiment let alone harassing in nature. It is undeniable that Wu injected herself that's, into uh, the conversation apropos of nothing. That's gonna, t it's gonna take a lot of subjective evaluations. I would like to see their methodology for that. I am curious. Um, but the nature of the beast is, I was, I, I observed a little bit of that back in the day. Um, you can be forgiven for thinking it was overwhelming given how little it takes to overwhelm a single individual on social media like this. So I'm, I'm, I tend to err Regardless of what the statistics actually show, I would tend to err on the side of generosity in terms of their perception. In fact, one of the biggest memes about Brianna Wu at the time was literally Wu. That's true, I remember that one. Because nobody seemed to know who she was or where she came from. She did just kind of pop up out of nowhere, so it, it, it does appear as though she inserted herself in front of the controversy first. So that would be a, a potential reason to be skeptical, simply because she was profiting directly from the attention. Um... But you have to be very careful with how you parse that out. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, latch myself to this. Despite this, let's take a look at some of Brianna Wu's biggest moments of controversy during the Gamergate saga. 
the late John Bain, better known by his username, Total Biscuit. By the way, um, I, I watched his, his uh, progression through cancer. That was that was harrowing. You can still see them on YouTube. Like, dear God, he chronicled basically uh, every single development in his cancer diagnosis. Um, it was it was really bizarre. I, I watched a lot of that when my father was diagnosed. Um, it was it, what happened to this guy is is horrific. He was a highly popular and respected PC gaming critic and podcaster. He made a constant stand for consumers in gaming, taking a principled opposition to practices such as pre-orders, microtransactions, and loot boxes being one of the first to sound the alarms about the introduction of many of these strategies. Naturally, he also took issue with some of the practices and games journalism that he saw as unethical. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. The last few weeks has been turbulent, there's no doubt about that, and many, many people have got hurt in, unfortunately, what appears to be a necessary discussion on the role of games media and, more to the point, the ethics of games media in 2014. The harassment that's been going on is deplorable. The death threats, some of which I've received myself, flying left and right. The actions of psychopathic individuals. It's disgusting. There's no question about that. However, it's also a giant distraction. These few psychopaths are not the real issue at play. The interesting part about this, in relation to Gamergate, is that he did not focus on the more questionable critiques of female developers sleeping with journalists. Though, he did acknowledge Zoe Quinn's alleged relationships with journalists at outlets such as Kotaku was the spark that lit the fire. You've got to bear in mind that the same websites that were reporting... It's a little bit trickier than that. So that is like the, the instigating incident that is typically cited from people within Gamergate. There is some layering here. So there were people who would principally talk about, principally in terms of primarily, would primarily talk about um, concerns about um, conflicts of interest in terms of people who are reviewing products, especially indie products. Um, but there was an additional layer to this where it wasn't just the principle of the thing, where indie products or, or whatever were being um, puffed up or given positive reviews by, by journalists in influential positions or, or being given like connections or whatever um, because they had interpersonal relations with developers or they were benefiting in some untoward way. Um, it extended a bit further than that. There was also speculation, for example, that the presence of, of uh, female characters in, in positions of authority, especially, and to be fair, this is where it gets iffy, because a lot of it's done in a really exploitative and bad way. So it's not uncommon, for example, when you see uh, heroines in um, a lot of popular films where they will simply act like assholes as if this is what it means to be a confident, strong individual. And so you would have, uh, whenever you, you saw a, a woman as a, a character, especially like gender-bent characters, um, there would be a strong tendency to turn them into incredibly violent and abrasive and, and pretty brutal people. Um, when the 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 appropriate thing to do is is to is to make them protagonistic and competent and things like that. You you tr it's sort of like how um if anyone's seen uh, if anyone's seen the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um the Falcon as a character has has no development in any of the previous movies in which he takes part. Suddenly, the one in which he's the protagonist, there's a a discussion about how a, a certain musician captures. I, it was it captures the the African American experience or something I can't remember the language, but it's like oh there's a there's a black actor as the lead actor now all of a sudden we need to talk about his blackness that needs to be like a center part of the focus. It would have been much more appropriate if that took place as an aside in another film instead of going oh di it's 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 time to it's it's time to um it, it it's you know what I mean like it, it gets kind of gross. Similarly, it's like uh, of of Avengers Endgame. Um, oh, here's the girl power sequence. We have all of the, the women in a line, suddenly. This chaotic battlefield has somehow entirely sorted itself out along gender lines. Um, and you have this bizarre and uncomfortable sequence in which you have uh, o only, only the girls passing along the gauntlet. And it's like, what the hell is this? So there are reasons to find that weird. Like, that's, that's cynical. That's like, we'll, 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 we'll tick the boxes kind of approach. Um... But on on the flip side, like, that critique also lent itself to other attitudes, where it's like, 
well, no, maybe uh, maybe it's appropriate for the female character like Zelda to be an object that you save and whatnot. And it's just, you know, women are just naturally weaker than men and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit more complicated than just uh, people saw unethical stuff happening in games journalism and were responding accordingly. There was a lot being loaded into that. Leaving aside how that was uh, how that was carried out, which was pretty nasty at parts. If you if you look at like conversations, um, uh, the 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 kinds of interactions that took place, we were pretty jaded by it back then. Um, but compared to now, it's it's like it's a different world. Um, the 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 kind and the level of vitriol that took place there. A fairly one-sided view of what Gamergate was. And it's not that they were lying necessarily, but they were telling only part of the truth. Were also implicated in uh, ethical scandals that were brought up during the whole thing. Now, uh, Kotaku, which is uh, one of the sites that wrote quite a lot about Gamergate and certainly sided against it, were actually the cause of the whole thing. If you were to go back to the original incident which sparked it off, which was uh, a, an indie developer who was accused of essentially having a nepotistic relationship with a journalist and really it was more about at least in my eyes the journalist allowing that to happen you know i think it's in a developer's best interest to get good press any way you possibly can if you decide that being friends or even engaging in a romantic fling with a journalist is a way to get positive press that's your prerogative you know, and, and you you as a as a developer have no i don't know if i agree with that ethical requirement on you at that point. But the journalist does. You know, the journalist at that point should be recusing themselves. TB was more concerned with activities such as the wine is total biscuit. and dining of journalists at big corporate events, the awarding of free merchandise, undeclared sponsorships, and potential blacklisting of certain outlets from receiving review codes of games as a result of negative scores. As a result of Total Biscuit's outspoken nature on these issues, he became a target for the small minority of harassers on the other side of the issue, the self-professed social justice advocates who would send death and rape threats to his wife. And I checked Twitter about an hour into my chemo session, and my feed was full of death threats, for the most part. Um, a lot of people, especially uh, who knew about my condition, because it was quite public, you know, saying that I hope cancer gets you quickly, and other people saying, you know, I will, I will come and kill you. I will rape your wife. I will kill your child, etc., etc. I, mean, I counted well over a hundred instances in the course of an hour from a hundred different people of people saying pretty horrible things. This was not helped by Brianna Liu, who took it upon herself to frame TB. I want to be clear about this. I grew in racist, sexist Mississippi. I'm very familiar with Total Biscuit and the mindset of people like him. People like Total Biscuit have elaborate delusions about how they aren't prejudiced. They see themselves as the victim of world gone PC. They're unable to see the harm they cause. They're loud. They'll never understand the issues because they're willfully ignorant. Throw whatever nonsense you want at me. I learned to not be intimidated. My loud Mississippians early on. I'm not intimidated by you either. Okay. As a misogynistic, <clears throat> transphobic leader of harassment, surely... Um... They're able to see the harm they cause. Okay. Um, this is tricky. Like, I, I can see how you could glean from this that Total Biscuit is racist and sexist, but there's not actually a clear statement here that attributes that to him. So, for example, one thing that y you could you could do with the language... Here, I, I need to... I should move my... So you can see the top there. There, you can pause and you can look at that if you want to read the top part. Um, one of the things you, you could you could contend, for instance, is that the kind of person who doesn't, you know, take this kind of thing seriously could be causing harm. That's a, that's a potential line of argumentation that doesn't necessarily assign racism or sexism to Total Biscuit. Um, now, that being said, no, no, the second one, if he has elaborate illusions about how he's not prejudiced, eh. Yeah, never mind. No. No, but she, she called him that. That's it. I tried to be fair, okay? pouring fuel on the fire that raged against him and it's this cancer diagnosis um you know total biscuit is someone who's very popular in this realm he's you know as transphobic and sexist and horrible as someone can be okay let me look it up hang on total biscuit let's see if we can't find evidence of this total biscuit 
transphobic, sexist. Let's see. <clears throat> What's the evidence for this? Oh, I'm looking on Reddit. Why do people think Total Biscuit was transphobic? The idea that uh, Total Biscuit is transphobic stems from a single joke he made some time ago where he claimed to be Toastkin, who identifies as a toaster. This is apparently a joke and says something about the low standard for transphobia within Gamer Gazi. Is that it? He made like a Keffel's tear joke? Because I, I want to know if she has a basis for this. So... Total Biscuit's legacy and the collateral damage of Gamergate. Let's look at this. Can I get this off my screen? Okay, there we go. Um, What pulled Bane into the online controversy was an issue he had covered before related to false copyright strikes issued by YouTube bullies and music corporations. Um, unfortunately for Bane, his star power, white male privilege, and massive fan base of more than a million could never change the narrative to the issue he wanted to discuss. Okay, here we go. What, um, Breslau maintained... Bane didn't care about nor had any interest in any female developer's sexual history, which sparked the original mob. Claims that Bane shared a slut-shaming video referencing Five Guys Burgers and Fries, I don't know what that is, or that Bane made his career off harassing women are both grossly erroneous. What is this? Is this by Bane? Yeah, it's by Bane, okay. The kind of places posting information about this whole thing are also places they take with a pinch of salt or who already have a clearly outlined agenda. Internet Aristocrat did the main video on this, a channel mostly dedicated to debunking SJW topics and complaining about how prevalent they are in today's media. That's uh, Mr. Medicare for those who aren't familiar. A uh, fair cause for the most part, though it's a fine line to walk at the best of times. Honestly, that whole debate is something I try and stay the hell away from because the people involved in it are fucking terrifying. Okay. So here's... I see. So here's the problem I'm running into. You can't say this about Total Biscuit. Okay, you can't you can't say this. Look, I'm gonna hear it again. Um, you know, Total Biscuit is someone who's very popular in this realm. He's you know as transphobic and sexist and horrible as someone can be. And he has mass. Okay, you can't say that. Let's see. Do I have um? Who do I have here? I'll find him on Twitter. Hang on. I got him. I got him there. <clears throat> Actually, do I have it in? No. Bear with me. Everyone stay calm. Hmm. Hmm. Where did I put you? Where did I put you? He 
It would be helpful if I saved things in an organized fashion so I could find them fast. I should do that in future. All right, I'll find it on Twitter. Hang on. I think you're all familiar with this already. So here's here's the short of it. I'll find the I'll find the clip later. Um, you can't say this about Total Biscuit, and then go out of your way to say that uh, Connor Counterpoints is just a wonderful guy. And if most conservatives were like him, it'd be a better world. And and amidst him saying pathologizing um, various types of trans people, you can't do that. That's not a thing you can do. Like, you can't go and work with somebody like this. You can't then go and, like, whitewash other people who have made overtly transphobic statements. I don't I don't see the basis for this on, on Total Biscuit's side. Is, is it because he enjoys Medicare? That's not enough. Of audience that there's just no awareness that this is important. This was always a ridiculous allegation, as even at the time, Total Biscuit made his support for women and ethnic minorities in the industry well known. Co-hosting a podcast with one of the biggest named women in gaming at the time, known as Dodger, which featured a variety of female guests, such as Alana Pierce of IGN, and Felicia Day. It is disproportionate. Yes, it's a male-dominated industry. And I certainly hope for that to change, and it is changing. Year on year, we're getting more and more women being involved in this industry, and that's fantastic because it's a creative industry, and we need as many minorities involved as possible because that, that's what makes interesting stories, right? Further disproving Wu's allegations here, the third host of said podcast, Jesse Cox, ran a convention called HoxCon, where TB would appear for each year he was around for. In 2017, an attendee at the convention Ask the well-known internet meme debate question, are traps gay? Yo, in the back. What up, dude? So, uh, me and a couple friends were having um, a discussion about this at the bar last night. Are traps gay? Oh, Once this God occurred, sake. Total Biscuit was made aware that transgender guests at the show were made uncomfortable, and as such, made a tweet condemning the question as transphobic and asking for details on who asked it. We condemn the transphobic question, quote-unquote, asked at the CoxCon panel. If anyone knows the identity of the person, please inform a member of staff. Okay, that's a respectable response to that. Before promptly having the guest removed from the event. Total Biscuit would go on to defend this action, despite immense backlash from different corners of the internet, which he would discuss. Yeah, by the way, um, this is one thing that I am taking issue with this video, the sort of whitewashing of Gamergate. That backlash is precisely because it was not just about an ethical concern with uh, the purity of games journalism. It, it, that, that was a vehicle for other things. So when Total Biscuit is attacked for what is pretty reasonable, um, someone uh, made a, a pretty severe insult against an entire community of convention goers because that's just so funny. Um, for, for him to be socially punished for reacting to that strongly um, tells you the tenor of the kind of people who were involved. This is definitely not a situation where Gamergate was was an innocent actor in any in any respect, and it also had a lot of bleed over with people who were uncontroversially toxic actors, um, like really toxic. I'm not talking Mr. Medicare toxic. I'm talking like like bad, like Nick Nick Fuentes types. I don't know if Nick Fuentes was ever involved in this, but like that that kind of mindset. The next year on his H3 podcast appearance, and our staff notices we have uh, quite a few transgender guests that come. Like they've been coming since year one. Mm -hmm. You know, regular people, they just come to the convention to have a couple of days of no bullshit. Mm -hmm. you know, to have a nice friendly time with a group of people that hopefully are all very supportive and 
sure. generally yeah. nice people, right? And the staff see there's a lot of noticeably uncomfortable faces, like there's a girl who's really upset, she's crying. Sucks. And yeah, yeah. Ethan, Ralph, Milo, Yiannopoulos, et cetera. Yeah, that's 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 correct. The staff makes the decision, like what we're gonna do about this. Like we don't know what you know why this guy said this. Is he here to troll the event? Like is he here just to mess it up for people? Is he here to actually upset people? Or is he just like a giant cringe law? What we Like like I, I think like, this is pretty definitive. If he's going to take a heavy hand against something like that, um, especially amidst that kind of thing being a popular meme within Gamergate communities, because it was, um, it, it seems pretty below board to be calling him uh, a, a transphobe in that way, unless you have something, like, concrete to bring to bear. You need something really concrete. Like, sometimes people do stuff cynically. Chenk and uh, Anna Kasparian are, are examples. Um, but... Like, I, 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 I would need to see something in the other direction. I've searched just in the last few minutes. I haven't seen anything to that effect that would, would justify that. The closest I've gotten is that he makes a joke making fun of, um, like, non-binary identities briefly. Um, which is not cool. The Toskin thing, it's like, that's that's kind of obnoxious. Um, that's, that's pretty disrespectful. But here's the problem. That's not something that Wu can leverage, because Wu has herself condemned those groups. She said, she doesn't just say that they are... I God, I need to find it now. I'll have to, I'll just have to find it. There's no way around it. I can't bring it up and not, not provide evidence. It's not in my nature. So I'm going to start scrolling backwards. Oh dear God, I tweet too much. If I tweeted less, I, I would be able to find this faster. Give me one sec. I'm just going to scroll down, 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 down. We shall find it. It's not that long ago. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, we're getting close. Sweet. Yeah, here we go. Sweet. Okay. Huzzah. So, here we go. Um, zoom out a little bit. Can we make that smaller? Come on. Why is that not minimizing? It's like, it's, 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 okay. It's just, it's, it's maintained the same aspect ratio. Um, okay, I got a plan. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna open the image in a new tab. Boom, there we go. And let's see if that works. Haha! -ha! We did it. Um,. I guess we'll have to extend the side there. I hate OBS so, so much. Okay. Um, so this is in response to Insomnoir saying, actually recognize them as valid people, including recognizing their identity, is important. This is referring to people like Doe. Brandon Wu responds, I don't know a single trans person that feels this discourse, which is overwhelmingly led by cis people, is actually helping the community. That's not a stance that Brianna Wu can take, calling Total Biscuit a, a transphobe on the grounds of making fun of non-binary identities by saying, like, helicopter gender, toaster gender, toaster kin, things like that. That's, um, that's making fun of other kin and things of that sort. That's not, an, that's not a line of, of critique that she has a right to take, given what she is saying here. So, I don't know what the basis is for her calling him transphobic. Um... By this, I, I would I would register her as being largely transphobic. It seems like she's only accepting of um, binaristic trans identities, which is incoherent, because you're still li relying on the, the sex binary as the sole determinant of identity, which is precisely contrary to the point that it doesn't determine your identity. But in any case, I digress. Let's... Uh Let's resize this so we don't have the awful side bit. There we go. Sweet. All right, let's press on. We heard about uh, one of the staff had actually overheard this guy at a bar and apparently heard him talking to his friends about his plan to sort of say this. Mm. And this had come up later. I'm like, well, you know, we don't know for sure. He may have just said that while he was drunk. We don't know. One way or the other, we have some people who are uncomfortable at the show then they don't feel comfortable being here 
we need to do something about it. We need to do something about it quick. Mm -hmm. And we need to do something about it in a way that, that everybody knows. So the best way we thought to do that was, well, the staff made the decision to get rid of them. And like, well, I can put it out on my Twitter. That's what we did. I announced it. Well, I saw your tweet. And I, I guess a lot of people are saying that you started a witch hunt for this guy. Yeah, that's nonsense. Like, we never released his name because, of sure. course, we would never do that. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what his name is. Right. I don't even know what it looks like. I had nothing to do with that. I had I, I found this comment by someone who I guess was offended by the way you reacted Long-time fan that. of Total Biscuits up until the meltdown over the meme question at CoxCon. Why did he take the joke so seriously? It would have gone so much better for him if he just laughed it off and then made a seemingly unrelated comment about it later, assuming he felt that someone may have seen it as transphobic. Clearly, a huge amount of his fan base as well as casual observers... Okay, what's this? Oh, this is from this year. All right. <sighs> okay. This is uh this is recent. Oh god damn it. Um, when Total Biscuit died, I made the decision to just say nothing despite the way he targeted me. I thought I was being decent, but what I see clearly now is those of us that said nothing allowed history to whitewash a fairly horrific history of extreme harassment. What harassment? Who did he, like, do we have, do we have examples? Did, some, she must have given examples. Does anyone, let's see, uh, Total Biscuit Harasser. Uh, opinion, Total Biscuit was the alleged leader of the biggest online harassment campaign known as Gamergate because he had beef with Anita Sarkeesian. Oh, was that it? Is that it? He had, he had like, a, a, a loose affinity for the, the, the ethics and journalism thing? Like, like you need you need evidence for this. It's not enough to just say, oh, "Oh, he 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 heard like the slogan and thought it made sense. Therefore, he's responsible for orchestrating it." You're attributing harassment to him. That that's more specific than that. Okay, hang on. Okay, let's let's look at this. This is from what is this? Nemuro Memorial. I don't know what this is. Uh, okay. Love him or loathe him, it's undeniable that John Bain, much better known as Total Biscuit, is a highly influential video game personality with a huge and passionate fan base. The opening line to Kotaku article that went online today. Uh, John Bain is a YouTuber, podcaster, and man with a large audience in the gaming community. Um, he's also a huge, absolute prick. Today, Kotaku UK, as part of a week-long endeavor to write about harassment within gaming culture, released an interview with Bane where he details his experiences with harassment. Um, as Bane has such an unfathomably large audience and has been acting within gaming communities for over a decade, this may seem like a good thing. Oh, I see. Uh, his experience with, got, it, got it. His experiences with harassment. Other articles in the series thus far have focused on harassment streams and twitches. Um, however, he's an absolute prick. The current political climate is pretty inflammatory. Uh, within various gaming cultures, Bane has actively contributed to such harassment. Okay, so he actively supported Gamergate. Um... Despite suffering from harassment itself, as almost anyone suffering from such hypervisibility will, so we're downplaying this, that's an interesting decision, although more so if you happen not to be a cishet white man, Bane's contributions to harassment campaigns and his lack of rect rectification cannot be ignored. To this day, people fear to mention him by name on public social media in case his name-searching hordes find them and decide to target them. Bane's support of Gamergate is not a small and a substantial thing. That event, quote-unquote, gave a name to many bigots who had been and still are supported by gaming communities and society in general for a long time. It also resulted in many different targets being chosen by figureheads such as Bane to be threatened and harassed. Do we have 
examples. So he quotes here, there have been several incidents where I've blown up at people and there have been a lot of drama incidents that are attached to my name, some of which completely rightly are my fault, some of which are not really or exaggerated or in some cases completely made up, but I'm still in the business today. Okay. Okay. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with this. So yes, um, being uncritical about a movement that included as toxic elements as Gamergate did, as a person with a significant amount of public reach, bad, grossly irresponsible even. But if you're Brianna Wu, and you've recently been going out of your way to whitewash Destiny's background, this doesn't look too good. If this is the basis of your critique for calling him transphobic and racist and sexist, etc., th this doesn't. This isn't great. You need something substantial. You need to show him going on a Richard Spencer style rant. Say you need to like show him uh, act, doing like the John Tron thing. This isn't enough. Like other people can criticize Total Biscuit in this vein, but Brianna can't. Brianna's gone out of her way to defend people because she saw a media advantage in doing so who have done far worse. Or identical. At best, identical. Let's be generous. Identical. But we could say far worse. Like, we, we, we could talk, for example, about um, publishing nudes, threatening to publishing nudes. Um, actually, directly, personally targeting specific people for, for harassment and ridicule. Um, uh, uh, talking about how he, he was in all seriousness considering, um, planning out and had actually planned out to, to murder a kid and his father because the, the kid was disrupting his internet much more serious than it sounds like that's disrupting his business, but that sends an additional message. Um, he'll fucking kill you if you interfere with his, his income, which some people think is based, but that stands as a constant and open threat to other people. This is this is incredibly dangerous. Um, you can't make that claim that this person, just by dint of being a big figure and paying lip service to these people and paying lip service to the movement or just onboarding like its most surface level slogans or just even onboarding the, the notion of concern with ethics and gaming journalism and then go out of your way to defend someone who publicly considered financially supporting Kiwi Farms amidst the Keffels issue, who, who did all, like, you can't do that. The, the issue here is not with an inconsistency in her narrative. Maybe she's being a bit of a firebrand here at the time. The issue is with the, the grotesque cynicism and hypocrisy that this demonstrates. Nothing that this person says actually, actually reflects what she thinks is true. Because you wouldn't do that if that was the case. Observers think that was poorly handled at best. So just to reiterate, why get so up in arms over a joke? And then he says, anyway, no hostility, man. And he what is a, is a fan of yours. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I'd ask him the same question. Why get so up in arms over what we did? <laughs> right. Ultimately, it seems like none of the people who are actually at the show were upset about how we handled it. Right. Mm. Like, I know for a fact that people came to me and said that they were not upset, quite the opposite, that they right. were happy that it, that it had been handled that way. And it seems like when you know there's a 4chan brigade and you know there's a bunch of subreddits that are basically dedicated to trolling and you know that they've gone after you on purpose, mm. it's kind of hard to take comments like that sincerely. Despite all of this vindicating context, Wu continued her smearing of TB, even after his passing, claiming, The most impactful legacy of John Bain that I see is an army of toxic gamers who harass women. Hang on, let's see. is an army of toxic gamers who harass women they don't like in his name. This is a strange comment, given his repeated disavowal of harassment, and the fact that by any standard you could claim TB encouraged harassment, Wu would also meet that same standard, 
With her lies about him, no doubt encouraging action taken against the family she professes to be so concerned about. The most clear-cut, easily established example of Wu's self-victimization is when she posted a hate thread about herself calling for people to harass her, which oh, was yeah, promptly deleted to the discussion page of her Steam Greenlight campaign for Revolution 60. This is probably a good time to cover So here's the thing. This is what she this is what Brianna Wu did. I'll 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 pull up I'll pull up the thing. So Sorry, I'm just saving this quickly so I can pull it up onto the uh, the screen here. All right, so this is what this is what he's referring to. Oh God damn it! Okay, hang on. This is what he's referring to. Is GSX head of development and noted feminist Brianna Wu a terrible person? HN, Gamergate, and Kotaku in action, knock yourselves out. So, she gives an explanation for this. So she she claims, so the, the, the read on this, because she posted this as such and apparently took it down. I haven't verified that she's taken it down, but it seems people said she took it down. Um, people took her to be fabricating a harassment campaign against herself. That's my read on it, honestly. Um, because her explanation is, is, is kind of absurd, but she gives an alternative explanation. What she claims is that actually her goal was to centralize all of the harassment against her to a single thread. The reason why I don't find that plausible is because A, it's absurd. The existence of an additional thread does not herd people into that thread and contain them there, which is ostensibly the goal. Otherwise it's pointless. Um, and, and, and B, because it's, it's a politically stupid thing to do. And the reason why that is a factor for me is because if I take her at her word, Brianna Wu is an experienced and pragmatic political actor. This is the action of an imbecile. So there's one of two, one of two possibilities here. Either she was attempting to do something a little bit savvy in a sloppy way and accidentally uh, tried to stoke the, the, the flames against herself in order to boost her signal, her own signal, by increasing like her, the, the amount of people talking about her in, in wherever. Um, and she, she just accidentally did so under her, her uh, main account, which happens. Intelligent people f fuck up sometimes. Um, which is slimy, but not stupid. Or, she's an idiot. And I feel like of those two, the former one's more palatable. Because the statements that she's, the posturing that she has been doing is based upon her having political experience, is based upon her wisdom. If she's dumb as a rock, which you'd have to be to do this. That's not good. That's not good for her. That's not better. You know? That doesn't strike me as a good as a good trade for her. For Wu's game, Revolution 60, as an attempt to promote this game and its Steam Greenlight campaign, as well as cover up the fact that she was missing deadlines for its release, is theorized to be the impetus of her attempts to drum up controversy and public attention during Gamergate. This is somewhat reinforced by the fact that she conveniently claims the first instances of harassment to have occurred while she was at PAX East promoting her game. The game started as an iOS release for the iPad. Wu has been quoted as describing it as Heavy Rain meets Mass Effect. I'll show you some gameplay and allow you- It is not Heavy Rain meets Mass Effect. Oh, it is, it is not. <laughs> it is, it is something, but it is not Heavy Rain meets Mass Effect. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, you know what it is, you know what it is, it's, 
It's, uh, let's see. What is it called again? What is it called? Hang on. There's, um... Winx Club, that's what it is. Um, it's, it's, it's like if you crossed, uh, don't, if you Google it, you know what I'm talking about. It's like if you crossed Typing of the Dead with Winx Club. Don't even ask how I know about that. Um, but it's like, I don't even know what Winx Club is. I just know about the, the art style. Let's see. Winx Club is an animated series co-produced by Iron Bay. It's crazy. Italian, da, 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 da. Magical Universe. Please tell me it's not a porn. What is it? Um, okay, it ran on Nickelodeon. It's not porn. Good. Um, but it's this. It's this thing. You see the similarity. It's, 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 there's, there's no, there's no gameplay that's like Mass Effect except for the, the horrendous dialogue wheel. Which is the only the only holdover from that? It has no, none of the properties of of Mass Effect. Well, maybe she they stole some of the costumes from it. Three to the side. But dear God, we played some of that last night, and my stream was uh, demonetized for because apparently um, they used licensed music, which is great. Oh, here we go. We got a got a sample. Okay, oh, I see. So it, it didn't... Sorry, I thought the audio died. Um, this is the... This was... Uh, there's licensed music here, I think. Wings Club is a toy first. Very popular. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You get the idea. It's a very bad game. It's a very bad, very bad looking, very poorly designed... After the iOS release game. Most of the gameplay, especially on the PC release, because I, I, my understanding is on the iOS release, there were like swipe games for it, so there was some flow to it. The PC release, which I played, is like there are entire sequences where, press the space bar really fast! And that's the entire sequence. Place. We ran a Kickstarter campaign to fund the PC port, which was successful in raising over $12,000. Despite being released around the time of a feminist reckoning in gaming, the character designs appear to be some of the most grotesquely sexualized, malformed, demonic entities ever modeled. No, uh, uh, that's fine. Here's the weird part about those, uh, here's, here's the weird part about those, okay? Let's see. Brianna Wu... Revolution... 60 character models. Here's, here's where this gets weird. Here's where this gets really weird. I think this is the article. I think this is it. So, this is where it gets strange. Um, if girls don't like the way games are made, why don't they just make their own? Brianna Wu decided to do just that. <laughs> um, so, Let's see if we can find it. So the focus on women doesn't just come through in the story. Um, the game's battle system, designed by Jenna Hofstein, is a combination of touchscreen-based quick-time events and a more methodical turn-based system played by leaping around a small grid to avoid enemy fire and return it. This, Wu said, was designed specifically to appeal to everyone with a careful eye on how women play games as compared to how men play. My company did something very different I wish the industry would pay attention to. When you put in a call for playtesters, the vast majority of people who write you back are 20-year-old hardcore gamers. And without work, that's who ends up in your testing pool. 
This means video games are frequently developed for 20-something male gamers. We made sure that 50% of our playtesters were women, since almost 50% of gamers were women these days. As a result, Revolution 60 appeals to women in very specific ways. When you watch a guy playtest a game, they frequently want to attack as fast as possible. I have gone into plane tests and see men hammer on the iPad so hard, I was afraid they would break the screen with their gorilla man hands. What's interesting is women don't generally approach a game like that. The twitch reflexes for an Infinity Blade stress them out. So, we made a game that relies on pattern recognition and timing. She said, stressing, it's not that Revolution 60 is a game made just for women, but by including women in our testing, we made it a game accessible to women. <sighs> it's designed for the women brain. For the woman brain. Now here's, here's where we get into the art style. I think where we can do better, she says, is to diversify the body types a bit more. I am extremely tall and skinny, and that's reflected in our character models. But when we made the character designs back in 2011, I didn't understand just how much female gamers wanted a variety of body types. In the sequel, you're going to see other kinds of women represented because we are all beautiful. So, are they hypersexualized? Not in the strictest definition, until you realize that they're all super thin because she considers fat people to be side characters, but that's neither here nor there, I suppose. Wu claims to this day that this was an amazing, groundbreaking game, and claims that before abandoning her game development career, her studio, Giant Space Cat, was on the verge of expanding into VR and AR, comparing their projects to the holodeck from Star Trek. And we were in the middle of a huge expansion into VR and AR. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in some ways, Revolution 60 was my line in the dirt telling the industry to take me seriously. Like, look, I can deliver a quality game. Look at this. Because we were working on some of the- Oof, that hurts my soul. It's so bad. Coolest Mass Effect technology you'll ever see. Like, stuff that really pushes this to the heart. Oh, holodeck. God. Brooks is- Oh, yeah. Brooks is going to hate this so much. Because Brooks actually did that, by the way. Brooks's stuff is legit. I, I've seen footage of, like, the stuff that he's done. He's shown me some of his, his, his stuff before. Um... Like, he's, he's worked on cool things in, in, in gaming, and especially in VR. That's like, it's actually seriously, like, psychologically interesting. <laughs> this is not it. Brianna Wu is, is, never, is never breaching that at all. Oh, God. She's just fucking lying. Oh, it's, it's, what else is new? Really? In 2018, Wu also claims to have worked 80-hour weeks for years. Can I, can I get real with you about this? It was so hard for me to make this decision because I have worked 80 hour weeks since 2010 building up my game studio. Conflicting with an ex-contractor of the studio named Emma Clarkson. Who what is this? Today I have joined an exclusive club of women game developers both supported and blocked by Brianna Wu. Good thing Bri and I aren't working on BFIG together this year again so I won't have to do all the work she decides not to do this time around. Oh, I'm covering half of the thing here. Let me shrink myself down so I fit. If Brianna Wu ever hires you to do work and you quit the contract because it's going past the agreed date, watch out, she'll lie that she fired you. I also wouldn't recommend appointing Brianna Wu to manage anything that requires any actual work on her behalf if you expect it to get done. If you want someone who will say the same stuff about Gamergate over and over again at your college or university, then get in touch, I guess. Was this uh, Emma Clarkson? I don't know anything about her. Let's see. Emma Clarkson. Brianna Wu. Um, okay. Here's a Medium article. Additional evidence that Giant Space Cat is a scam artist. Giant Space Cat, once again, is Brianna Wu's name on Steam. Uh, I don't know who this is. It's been almost four weeks since I posted my first article about Giant Space Cat, failing to update every platform it has outside of Twitter, including its own website, and the response from the community online has been much bigger than I ever could have expected. The users of Medium could not have been nicer, and I'm thankful for everyone who pushed, who pushed to spread awareness of it on Reddit and Twitter. You guys have helped the backers a lot, and I definitely appreciate it. Um, 
Twitter was 11-11 suspending accounts threatening the yesterday. That's a historic record, okay. Giant Space Cat Studios has been trying to avoid discussing us since the PR disaster they had back in early July, and its head, Brianna Wu, has used her clout to have several people who tried to bring it up suspended on Twitter. It's very clear she doesn't want us talking about it. Um, what is this? This is from... 2014. Want to tell beta test Revolution 60? Good news here at JSK. We are just two weeks from finishing the ending of Revolution 60. This means we anticipate having the iOS version out in the next few months and the PC Mac version not long after. Here's where you come in. If you have an iPad 2 or higher, or an iPhone uh, 4S and higher, we'd love to get you on our beta so you can help us ensure the game lives up to our team's standards. Write us at Test Giant Space Cat. Da, 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 da. We're planning on getting 200 people in this cohort with a 50 50 distribution on men and women. What are we looking for here? This new info paints Giant Space Cat in a much worse light than expected. New bits of information show Giant Space Cat Studios is either incompetent or completely apathetic towards obligations. Um, no concern over their failure to deliver on their Kickstarter promises. The audio in the stream chat, uh, there's a video uh, previewing the game. Um, so I'm assuming this is referring to the port. The game itself looks like the original Revolution 60 with some incremental updates, but features a UI update. Um, there's an audio problem, which Brianna Wu chalked up to something that she thought had been fixed, in spite of the fact the game had been done for over a year now, allegedly. Okay, this is not useful. Um, so, like, look, yeah, Brianna Wu, big dumb idiot, okay? If somebody says something like this, uh, don't broadcast them and, and, you know, like, use them for publicity if indeed your concern is getting people to stop harassing you. Just, just delete them. Don't give them the attention they desire. They will eventually get bored and they'll move on. Um... Don't don't make a spectacle of it. She did so, but here's the problem: the the immediate retort. Oh, so you expect her to be a perfect victim? You expect you put the onus on people who are being attacked to respond appropriately? This seems a little bit perverse. Um, this is just this is not helpful. There's no reason to highlight this. What am I looking for here? Okay, so here's the point of interest. So despite openly trolling the Twitch chat. Users like the aforementioned were allowed to do so with no intervention for almost nine minutes. It's not a very long time. Conversely, at 2020, you can see Medium user and longtime critic of Brianna Wu, Geth and 7 post a comment in which he says he likes what he's seeing from the game and is looking forward to it, and he's banned instantly. Interesting. Um... Amanda Warner was one of Giant Space Cat's most veteran employees, having been there since the company's creation. She's often listed as a co-founder, manager, and project lead. As of May, she's apparently left the company, or so she says in her LinkedIn page. User Jane Doe was nice enough to point out something I'd missed. This is almost that this is also the last time Brandon Wu had made any indication that the video game was ready to ship. At this point, almost every single one of Giant Space Cat's employees, except for Brianna Wu herself and her husband Frank Wu, have left the company entirely. Um, do we have, well, here we go, Emma Clarkson, this is what I'm looking for. Emma Clarkson, a contractor who did minor work for GSX at one point, and who thus far is the only thing resembling an employee of the company that has agreed to talk to us, similarly was unable to confirm Natalie's existence. I don't know who that is. Uh, what am I missing here? Oh, here we go. Brianna Wu claims her sizable Patreon budget goes toward the hiring and payment of a Twitter manager, Natalie O'Brien. Um, the Twitter has been inoperative since last year. It's doubtful she even exists. There doesn't seem to be evidence that she exists. I don't know if that's true. I don't particularly care. Um, Emma Clarkson hasn't confirmed this. Okay, that doesn't help me. I need I need data on Emma Clarkson. I need to know if her testimony is reliable. 
Emma Clarkson, Giant Space Cat. Well, that's no good. Not that Emma Clarkson. Brandon who has a harasser. What is this? unreadable. Okay. This is linking to Kiwi Farms. So these, um, I'm not going there for obvious reasons, but also it doesn't exist anymore. One of the major problems we deal with when we're trying to parse out stuff that happened during this period is that due to the incredibly toxic behavior of the people on the other side, um, they've managed to get all of their stuff taken down with just cause. So, congratulations, you goddamn worthless idiots. Mind-blowing. Well, I don't know. I don't... I don't... Is there a link here? See if someone sent me anything. Okay. Well, I don't know. I can't. I can't find anything on her, so I don't. I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll take her word for it for the time being. But all I have is all I have is her word for this. So, but here's here's what I'm getting from this. So the game took apparently three years to get put out. Um, I don't know if this is referring to the original game or if this is referring to the PC port. But apparently it took a ridiculous amount of time. Once again, it had a budget of four hundred thousand um, dollars, a significant amount of money that is significantly more than Amnesia: The Dark Descent, which was a much more detailed project. Received. Or not received. That's 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 what their budget was. So it's it's kind of preposterous that this is the product they produced. I have a suspicion most of the budget went towards voice acting, but I don't know. Alleges that Brianna Wu was incredibly lazy and lied about her after Emma terminated the contract. All of Giant Space Cat's social media has been silent since 2016, and nothing has been produced by the studio since the PC port of Revolution 60, which took over two years to complete after being funded via Kickstarter.
from that day onward, my life was changed forever in ways that I could have never predicted by vicious trolls and fans alike from every corner of the online, crawling out of the woodworks, and I could never have predicted, okay? I could never have predicted, I didn't know that at that time I'd set off a chain reaction that would end up with me in the situation I am today. I had no idea during the course of my journey I would meet friends from across the world and I would accidentally become targeted by a sinister international conspiracy. I would become an asset of the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. I don't know what this is. Uh, preemptive content warning, friends, I suppose. I have no idea what the fuck we're getting into here. Agency, I would avert missile strikes from hitting my hometown, save thousands of lives, I would shoot my dad in The Sims 3, I would send my friend on an overseas counterterrorism mission, and the process of all of this, I would permanently injure my left leg, my big toe, my gastrointestinal system, my mental state, and my eternal soul! <sighs> and all of this sounds like something out of a movie, I know! And I am off my meds, I know! But bear with me here, because this happened! This is the truth of the situation, and the whole truth, and nothing but! And you can check the sources I will provide, you can go to my channel, you can go through my history, watch the videos, okay? And know that this is not one word of an exaggeration. This is the future. This is my life. This is Jay Stryker! Who? My life li might be a movie, and my life might think like a movie script, but this movie doesn't have a surprise ending, because the good guys win! And I may not be a good guy online, but I will win the online, no matter if my- This is Jace Connors? Who's Jace Connors? According to loathsomecharacters.org, Jace William Connors, aka Parkour Dude 91, or in his fantasies Jack Stryker, is the main protagonist of the Deagle Nation video series, portrayed by the creator of the series, Jan Rankowski. In the series, he is a narcissistic, delusional, Islamophobic vlogger gamer who is addicted to weed and claims that he's a former U.S. Marine. He's best described as a childish joke who spends all of his time fantasizing playing FBS games and vlogging. So is he... Is he a comedian or is he a nutball? Like, is this... What is this? Probably not the best source, actually, I realize. Anyways, let's we'll see what this goes. Mom's a bitch! And no matter if you are a bitch to you trolls, so no! He's a comedian? Okay, so it's these. Yeah, fair enough. Grumpy Gen X, it could be both. Know that you cannot cut me down online! Because history is written by the victor's mother, bitch! And guess what? This is history, and I am the victor! Which is also me online! Press one! Okay, that's sick! 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 Woo! Woo! Okay, okay, that's sick, bitch. One of the few credible and verifiable death threats against Wu during Gamergate occurred when a figure by the name of Jace Connors, or Parkour Dude 91, who fronted a small group of extremist gamers called Deagle Nation, declared the start of Operation Wu Apocalypse. This was a plan in which he intended to commit an act of violence against Wu, quote, Assassin's Creed style, which he stated in a video while he waved around a knife. Phase 2 of this plan see another Deagle Nation member, Eli, pack data from Tumblr servers in Canada, the trip he filmed himself packing for. See? A little extra there. Um, um, bring in Skyrim. I mean, I know that doesn't really fit, but, like, I figured going to Canada is basically just going to be like Skyrim. That's not incorrect, actually. Canada is basically just Skyrim if it was covered in gas stations. Meets like fucking James Bond. So I'm bringing that. Um, 
Got some weapons here. Um, bringing this. I mean, like, I had to do, like, a concealed carry this time. So, I brought this thing. Because I'm going to be with my bitch dad. So, I'm bringing that. He's and a bitch dad, apparently. This gains further traction as Tice, the third and final Deagle Nation soldier, made a threatening video in which he wore a skull mask and detailed his part in the plan. So this is one of the 106 death threats that I have gotten this year. I'm going to play it for you. I'm going to tell you this is pretty shocking. This is the Skulls Manifesto where I'm going to be teaching you all I'm not teaching you. I'm gonna tell you about how me and my crew will fucking take care of the fucking limited gaming issue that you've all been hearing about on the gamer sites. We're gonna deal with this vigilante style, basically. I've pretty much unchained the beast within. I'm gonna be go bloodthirsty on these fascists and like. This is for the manifesto for the Skulls. We are an anarchist men's rights group called the Skulls, and this is our manifesto. We are fed up with the cops bullshit and the media, and we're going to take back the games industry from fags. It's our high priest put a death omen on Brianna Wu's life, and we are going to finish the fight. Uh, that's that's it guys. This is Tice Andrews, the official blade master of the Skulls. That's it. Keep it fucking real and you'll see me in the news. Look for the skull mask. I'm gonna do this Hitman style. This ended abruptly as Jace crashed his mother's Toyota Prius full of guns while on the way to enact this plan. This can be seen in the Sci-Fi Channel documentary, The Internet Ruined My Life, where Wu describes it as the most terrifying thing she has ever seen. YouTube, this is Jace right here, and this is my fucking car, or my mom's car, that when I was straight racing, could not perform, couldn't fucking perform on the road, and now the piece of shit has crashed, okay, I can't even kick the windshield out because it's made of bullshit plastic from Chase, and it blows, I wasn't even fucking drunk, I was just racing, you know, like normal, I was trying to straight race in the fucking hallway, and all this bullshit, and all this shit, totally useless, I hit and I fucking rolled on the ice, fucking rolled down here, and now look at this bitch. Is this real? Is this a, what is this? Is this a bit? What is this? Like it's like... Wait, 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 wait what is this? This is 100% real. What is it? What, what is real in this context? Chase here. This is Jace Connor. I am posting this for evidence of attempted murder. I didn't realize it at the time, but the timing was too perfect. I suspect Brianna Wu rigged my mom's Prius to crash and or kill me to silence me from being a Gamergate vigilante. There is one- oh, sorry, you can't see that because my face is over because I'm a fucking idiot. Hang on. Ah, oh, goddammit. There is one caveat to this story, however, which is that almost none of this was true. <clears throat> okay, uh, one of the most, one of the weirdest and most disturbing moments of Gamergate, I guess we have our answer. The point where a former future Marine named Jace Connors apparently crashed his car in an attempt to locate developer Brianna Wu is looking like a hoax. It's actually a sociopathic comedian. So here's, okay. I'll buy that. Sociopathic comedian. Here's the problem with this, okay? I can't fault Brianna for taking that seriously because there aren't markers that it's a comedy act. It's like, it's, it's funny enough. 
And I say funny in the sense of it's like it's cartoonish enough that my impulse is to say this is a bit. But it's it's so like the for lack of a better word, the taste is so demented and it's so like it's such it's it's just such a hack thing. I, I don't I don't know if I would I don't know if I would blame somebody for taking it as as like something serious because it has the appearance of like a snuff film, right? Like it looks like like sometimes crazy people are 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 are, are, are sometimes the kind of person who would do shit like that looks like that like sometimes there's there's like a, a cartoonishness to it um what who immediately comes to mind is um if anyone's familiar with the uh i can't remember his name but that guy who uh tried to send a bomb to uh, bjork the singer um he had like a long series of videos leading up to it and they were they could have been a bit like it's possible like it was it was insane enough um don't don't look those up by the way. Just just trust me, okay? I can explain why later, um, off stream. But it's it's don't not 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 good not good for you mentally to see. Um, but leaving that aside, like I, I can understand why Brianna would take that seriously. So I don't think she's an honest person, but I don't have to. I don't know if I would sign on to this one. Um, if we have and even this is like speculative. Is this is this like actually a hoax? Like, you know, and, and like, given the year this came out, it stands to reason. Whatever it was, the person wasn't that serious, but at the time, you don't know that. Not for real, right? So it's like, yeah. This was an obvious troll. The knife appeared to be plastic, and Chase Connors was a comedian. I don't know if that's plastic. I've seen knives that look like that. Metal ones. Like, the, not, sometimes knives just look like shit. I'm sorry. That could that could be a real knife. Like, it, I, I couldn't necessarily tell from this. It does look plasticky, but like... Necessarily? I mean, I think, the, I think the main giveaway would be how the marker's sitting on the blade. But... Called Jan Rankowski. Associated with the legendary... Sam Hyde led outfit, Million Dollar Extreme. Here, Brianna, I found this. Okay. He played the bit of a paranoid schizophrenic shut in gamer along with his friends. Some of the other plans and beliefs he discussed included a plan to rescue Tupac. Keep in mind she's centering herself here. She's not being responsible with the harassment. Okay, fair enough. I agree. Maybe responsible is the wrong word. We don't want to be victim blaming, but like she's certainly not being wise in how she's responding to this. Um, that's fair, but I I don't like once once again like you can't you can't criticize somebody for not responding to what they perceive as an attack. Uh, in in a less than optimal fashion, people do that sometimes. It's just how it is. Um, there's there's a perverseness to that. And we don't want to overextend that either. For me, this looks like I wouldn't take this seriously, but I can't blame somebody for taking it seriously. So I have to, I have to basically confess. Just I, I have to be agnostic here. And the article that was posted doesn't actually definitively claim or, 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 or prove that this was fake. It just says it's likely a hoax, and it is probably likely a hoax. It looks, it looks like some idiot sick joke, but that's not enough, unfortunately. From Palestine. Believing that U.S. Army snipers would you host a TED talk about it though? No, <laughs> no, you got me there. I would not host a TED talk about this. Smoke weed to stabilize their aim. Wanting to be a marine in the future deserves the same respect as being a veteran, and that parkour is a martial art. We further used the Tice video in a talk she gave. Look, man, I I had an argument with Adam and Sitch. In which they argued that the uh, the man who was choked to death on the subway should have tapped out because that's m mixed martial arts rules. Okay. P people people be stupid sometimes. That's just how the universe do. 
for Silicon Republic in 2015, playing a frankly absurd clip of the video, which has been almost completely scrubbed. <clears throat> I've slept on that, thought about it, and I'm going to post a video. It's extremely disturbing, no joking when I see trigger warning. This is serious stuff. This man has other videos where he is brandishing firearms, one with a knife threatening to kill me. Like, here's the thing. Maybe it's a joke. Maybe it's a comedy act, but she doesn't have to re read it that way. There, she has no obligation to take it to not take it seriously. Um, what you take to be sort of a common sense read on this, where you're nonchalantly like, "Oh, this guy's not serious." It's like sometimes they seem not serious. I wouldn't take this threat seriously personally if it was directed at me, but the, there's justifiable reason to take it seriously. Namely, you don't know a person's psychological state, and it's. It's it's a leap to say that you know this isn't a joke because there's no there's no signals there that it's a joke. You're making inferences on the basis of the exaggeratedness of certain parts of the production, but that doesn't necessarily prove anything, you know. So it's like, I I don't know what to say. Thanks, you fucking idiot. If if you were joking, um, for for giving a charlatan the tools she needs to boost her profile, like that's that's all I have to say to that. From the internet, in which Tice claims to be the official. Why the fuck would you take the chance that this is a joke, though? Because he's stupid. Maybe he's just stupid. There are stupid people out there. <sighs> Blade Master of the Skulls says that his high priest has put a death omen on Brianna Wu, calls her a fascist, and references the video game Hitman. It could be argued that despite this being an obvious troll to anyone with any sense, Wu genuinely believed herself to be in danger. However, as with many of her claims of harassment, she handled this in the worst way possible. As previously mentioned, Wu has a pattern of engaging with and signal boosting people she claims are threats to her life. This is the first thing you will be advised against doing, as it will only encourage the behaviour. While this could be chalked up to stupidity, it's also perfectly reasonable to interpret that she did not actually believe these threats to be legitimate, so she felt safe in fanning the flames for further attention. This is exactly what happened. As Jace continues antagonizing Wu on Twitter while demanding that they have a street race to settle the score. Hey, look, look at this, okay? Look. Here's the thing, right? As Jace continues. It doesn't matter if it's a joke. A threat to kill somebody is a threat to kill somebody. Like, it's it's stupid, I agree. That's unfortunately though not how this works, okay? You can't make jokes like this. You just can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, do, do do I think... Is my impulse to say that someone who says they're going to kill you with WWE moves if you don't street race me for Gamergate, do I think that person's serious? No. It doesn't matter. That's not... Come on, guys. He's antagonizing Wu on Twitter while demanding that they have a street race to settle the score. Wu would bring up this saga numerous times, as mentioned before, however, as recently as a couple of years ago, she would still misrepresent the issue further when promoting the seemingly failed Gamergate TV show she was working on. Despite it being known for years that this was a million dollar extreme trolling op, even being discussed in media articles at the time, Wu neglects to mention this and still simply claims that a man in a skull mask sent her videos. Again, not fully true, as they were public YouTube skits. What is she wearing? And says that he threatened... To what is this? Why well, she got like a braid of the star on it? Murder her husband and dogs, which, again... That's not a braid. What, what kind of hat is that? Hang on. Is that a braid? Yeah, it's a braid. ...cannot be verified, as the full video is no longer available. However, what we do have of this video does not corroborate this. Like, one of the most iconic uh, moments of Gamergate that they actually uh, put in the Law & Order episode was the man in the skull mask, like, sending videos to me about how he was going to murder me, my husband, and my dog. You know, it's kind of just melodrama, right? Uh, just not something I want to revisit. It's not something that I thought would add to the discourse. Okay. Politics may be the only area that Wu has some verifiable, legitimate experience. In the early 2000s, Wu was able to get a job for a brief time under Republican Senator to Mississippi. So, okay, just final, final word on that stupid thing, like... I think, I think you would have to be a complete bozo 
to start running with that as your, the principal example of your harassment and, and endangerment because no one's going to take you seriously after a few years. Um, probably why she doesn't talk about it anymore. But like by the same token, the the stating in text, "I am going to kill you" or "I'm going to threaten to kill you" or anything involving those words, right? It's like um, it's like when Sargon of Akkad did that stupid, that really stupid. I'm not even going to rape you campaign, right? When he was like making that like a, 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 a hashtag thing. Just the bare fact that you're projecting a sentence with those words in it. I uh, am going to da da da. Even if the not thing is there, the, the locution itself, like the content of it, triggers something. In, in the, the, the public imagination, there is there is an antisocial and, and there's a sp particular kind of intensity about it, let's say, that makes the particularity of the message not matter. Um, because the purpose is to put the phrase, I'm going to X you, in the face of the person you're sending it to. And that is taken as the violent act. It doesn't matter if it is actually semantically a threat. It doesn't matter if it's plausible. What matters is that you have thrown the image of threat of X into the person's face in a public manner. And that's that's not just easily spun, that evokes things. It's it's not innocent by itself. Does that make sense? Anyways. Trent Lott. A well-known supporter of segregation, seemingly up to and including. Wait, wait, what? Hang on. Wait a sec. Politics may be the only area that Wu has some verifiable, legitimate experience. In the early 2000s, Wu was able to get a job for a brief time under Republican Senator to Mississippi Trent Lott. Trent Lott. A well-known supporter of segregation, seemingly up to and including the time that Brianna worked for him. Lott spoke on December 5th at the 100th birthday party of Senator Strom Thurmond, who had based his presidential who had braced, bleh, I can't even speak, who had based his presidential campaign largely on an explicit states' rights platform that challenged the civil rights movement and later the Civil Rights Act as illegally overturning the separation of powers under the United States Constitution and called for the preservation of racial segregation. So Lott said, when Strom ran for president, we voted for him, we're proud of it, and if the rest of the country had followed our lead, we wouldn't have had all these problems years later. Okay. Post-Senate career. Uh, in 2014, he was contracted to work on behalf of Gazprom Bank, a Russian-majority state-owned bank targeted with sanctions over the 2014 pro-Russian unrest in Ukraine. Uh, he was fired in 2020 with no explanation. Interesting. It's a Freemason, that's weird. Lot became very popular in his district, even though almost none of its living residents had been represented by a Republican before. As evidenced in November 1974, Lot won a second term in a blowout. Cochran was also reelected in a blowout. Da, da, da. What were his policies? Voted against all three articles of impeachment against Nixon. Okay. 
Okay, hang on. Are we are we stretching a little bit here? Let's see. Job for a brief time on the Republican Senator to Mississippi, Trent Lott. A well-known supporter of segregation, seemingly... Do we have evidence that he supported uh, segregation? He seems like a piece of shit, but let's just be, let's cross our T's here. Because I don't know, because if, if he was mum about that, I don't know if Brianna Wu was just kind of like a brain-dead door knocker who didn't look at, like, the, the platform. Pro-segregation. All right, Trent Lott. This is who Brianna was working for briefly before she went into game dev. Um, long shadows of segregation. As a young lawyer making a start in politics in 1967, Trent Lott stunned a racially moderate friend running for governor by campaigning instead for an arch segregationist segregationist rival. Arch segregationist rival. God, that's a mouthful. Um. The next year, a month after the assassination of the Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Lott went to work as a top aide to one of the staunchest segregationists in Congress, a powerful Mississippi lawmaker, who two journalists say greeted Dr. King's death by grumbling it would probably bring about passage of a fair housing bill. Um, he was that congressman's handpicked successor. Uh, his record in the House, and since 1988, the Senate has been vetted intensely by his political opponents in the news media for signs of racial bias. Friday in his fourth apology for the remarks what remarks hang on at the event of the 100th birthday of Strom Thurmond Mr. Lott said for at least the second time in 22 years that the nation would have been better served over time had Mr. Thurmond been elected president in his 1948 Dixiecrat campaign he said after the scandal um Segregation left a stain on our soul, nation's soul. I grew up in an environment that condoned policies and views that we now know were wrong, and I repudiate them. This is after he retired from politics. So, Brianna Wu would have been working for him before this. Because this is after he was disgraced. So, she worked for a pro-segregationist, someone who was outwardly known as a pro-segregationist. That is a... Uh, that's a hell of a, hell of a resume. Okay, so in 1997, when I was six years old, yes, you could say that a favorite segregation then, he told Time Magazine. I don't know. So what did she work for him? Hang on. What's the timeline here? The only area that Wu has some verifiable, legitimate experience. In the early 2000s, Wu was able to get... Early 2000s, how old was she? Early 2000s, hang on, hang on, wait, wait. No, no, so he, he, he left the segregation thing. He left the segregation thing in 1997, so early 2000s. What was his what was his run in early 2000s? Oh, hang on. Wait, wait. When was the uh when was the birthday thing? Um So it looks like it was in 1988. Interviews with those who knew him early in life and previously unexamined documents from his congressional career show how deeply segregation pervaded Mr. Lott's family and social environment. They show, they show, too, how segregation served Mr. Lott well politically over the years as an Ole Miss student opposed to integration of his college campus and of his fraternity as a congressional aide writing sympathetic letters to a constituent who railed against the quote-unquote guerrilla race and as a member of Congress himself. Dear God.
Okay, hang on. Okay, what was his, uh, what was his platform then? Trent Lot. Following Republican gains in the 2002 midterm elections, Lot was slated to again become majority leader when the next Senate session began in January 2003. However, on 20th of December 20, uh, 2002, after significant controversy following comments he made regarding Strom Thurmond's presidential candidacy, Lot resigned. In 2007, he resigned. But, okay, but when was the... All right, let's math this. So Strom Thurmond, okay? His 100th birthday. So he was born in 1947. Hey, Google, be quiet. 1947. He wasn't born in 1947. It's impossible. Um, he was born in 1902. So 2002. Oh, shit. That would have been in 2002. Okay. God damn. Well. Looks like our, our pragmatic genius leader, Brianna Wu, was working for a person who was adulating a pro-segregationist and saying that we would have been better off as a country had the pro-segregationist been president. Brianna might be a bit of a dum-dum. How old was Brianna Wu in 2002? Do we want to give her the benefit of the doubt? Let's see. Brianna Wu, current age. 46. Okay. So minus 21 years, she would have been 25. I'm just a country bumpkin. I don't know anything about anything. But at 25, I would not, as a conservative, I would not have done activist work on behalf of of a pro-segregationist candidate. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... that's That would have been a line for me. Dude, Trent Lott was a famous racist in the 90s. Yeah, and you're a weird country. I'm, I'm not American. Like, here, let's, let's do a poll, okay? Which of you would have... Knocked on doors for Trent Lott at the age of 25. Say yes if you have... Extensive game dev experience, and you would. Or no. I haven't suffered a brain injury. Let's see what the numbers... Let's, 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 let's... let's. See how, how the polls show. Dear God. Like, the Republican bit is like, okay. I, I supported the Republicans at one point in my past, but, like, I... Segregationist is beyond the pale.
What is this? Hang on, one sec. I need to, make, I need to know what this is first. Okay, what is this thing? Um, oh, this is the uh, Natalie O'Brien thing. On 2015, okay, oh, I see, okay, whatever, we're, we're past that point. Get a job for a brief time under Republican Senator to Mississippi, Trent Lott. Yeah, okay. Well done, Brianna. Big, big brain move there. A well-known supporter of segregation, seemingly up to, and including, the time that Brianna worked for him. It, it would have had to have been during the time Brianna worked for him, because Brianna would have been in her mid-twenties by that point. What was just saying? When Strom Thurmond ran for president, we voted for him. We're proud of it. And if the rest of the country had followed our lead, we wouldn't have had all these problems over the years either in 2002. Strom Thurmond's presidential bid did include calls to preserve racial segregation. Wu took a long break from politics to pursue education, game development, you know the rough story. After becoming more of an So it looks like what happened was the person she was lobbying for was disgraced. She stopped working for the Republicans and then she started going into game dev with a... Yeah. Yeah, this isn't looking great. This is not... This is not a... a, a this is not a good profile that's being developed here. Activists than anything else through GameGate. We use this controversy to launch a Also, this is interesting, isn't it? Because earlier, we saw an allegation that when her cartoon was rejected, she made racial invectives against the, the person who rejected her. It was an oddly specific accusation. I don't I don't see any corroborating evidence for it. But if she's, if she's rolling around in these circles, like if she's, if she's going door to door for a segregationist in, in the 2000s, okay, that's a horse of a different color. That changes things a little bit. She didn't do game dev, game dev until a decade later. Yeah, that's my, that's my read. Yeah, this is uh, that's not good. That's 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 not good at all. Um Was it was it a decade later? Hang on. Let's see. Revolution 60. So if I go into Wikipedia. Yeah, about a decade. It was announced on March 2013. Yeah, so this is this is a bit of an error. She didn't go on to do game dev. She did do the cartooning thing. So hang on. So if I go to Brianna Wu's wiki, um, let's see here. So she started the animation studio with two hundred thousand dollars from her parents at nineteen. So this would have been before um, working in political front. Oh, that's interesting. So look at this. This is her uh, biography on, on uh, Wikipedia, okay? So it says here, At the age of 19, Wu formed a small animation studio to create an animated pilot episode. The venture was unsuccessful, resulting in her withdrawal from college and a move to Washington, D.C. to work in political fundraising for several years. So she got $200,000 to make the cartoon. 
went to college and then moved to Washington to do canvassing for Trent. Because that's that's what the timeline um, portrays. Because if it was... <laughs> so that's that's her... That's her political fundraising. Then. Let me let me double check this. Hang on. So if I click on this, where does this take me? It's a web archive link. Okay. Let me just make sure this doesn't pop up anything I can't show. It's taking a long time to load. a long time below dear god come on here we go okay what Hang on, wait. About Brianna Wu, is it this one? What is this? podcasts apparently but it's just it just says Brianna Wu oh there's things down here what did I just click hang on I'm going to close this so I, I know what I'm doing oh page is currently under construction this is just about Revolution 60 this isn't telling me anything about unless wait wait, wait. did I click the link did that screw it up okay give it a sec hang on Oh, come on. Well, in the meantime, we have 67 votes, and so far 81% of you haven't suffered a brain injury, and you wouldn't uh, were, have worked for uh, Trent and his pro-segregationist party. Pro-segregationist uh, run. Okay, well, there's nothing here. So, what's this? Okay, hang on. Okay, from the original. If I go to the originals, there, nothing there. Okay. So this this would have been it. The uh, the wiki's been scrubbed. There's no there's no record of this here. congressional bid. Then, in 2014, I was targeted by the alt-right in a hate group known as Gamergate. They targeted women who were just asking to be treated fairly by the tech industry. And when I spoke out against them... By having games meant for the feminine brain developed for them, I suppose, judging by the article we read earlier. They targeted me, too, in ways that were so criminal the FBI became involved. They told me that they would murder me, murder my husband, my pets. They did everything they could to silence me. This is somewhat significant, as Wu continually claims she wants to get away from that reputation. Also worth noting is the continued misrepresentation of what exactly happened, still citing the million dollar extreme trolling in an attempt to prove her point. It hasn't, I haven't seen proof it's trolling, okay? like. I'm sorry. It looks like trolling. I would read that as trolling intuitively. There is not, like, the kind of concrete proof that you would need to say that she's insane for interpreting it that way. I, 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 don't, I don't trust her judgment. I don't trust her reasoning. I think she's an incredibly disingenuous person. I wouldn't believe her intrinsically. 
but in a public sense, like when we're discussing this in, in this light, like you, you can't make leaps. You either, the, the bolts are either in or they're loose. Including the video of Jace's overturned car as if he were genuinely on the way to carry out Operation Woopocalypse. Wu also still refers to Gamergate as a hate group, a claim she made in the Boston Globe's interview with her. Which That's, which is largely fair. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it's largely fair. As we covered earlier, is patently untrue, given only around 5-10% to of Gamergate's tweets had a negative sentiment, and it was in no way a real group or organization. Depending on the methodology used to determine a negative sentiment from something else, and depending on what those negative sentiments were, and whether or not there was widespread condemnation of them, or whether they were accepted, tacitly or explicitly, and the fact that people like Milo Yiannopoulos were at the top of that kind of thing is like, tells you a lot. It was a social media campaign and consumer advocacy movement. Whatever motivation. Like, lots of people received threats uh, from during the Gamergate thing, and not just in the direction of Brianna Wu. Um, remember, like, even back um, in, in this same video, when uh, it's, it's talking about Total Biscuit demanding that the guy who, who asked the transphobic joke question um, be removed. Uh, he received hate back towards him. Not from feminists, that would have been received from the Gamergate people who thought he was being in some way unfair by by censoring this this particular individual. So that tells you the tenor of this. Like th th This is the kind of thing that stood as like a normal um, type of statement in public at the time from that crowd. As you want to attribute to the people involved, genuine concern for consumers and journalistic standards, or misogyny, you can give that charity at the time, but multiple years on when everyone knows it's a Sam Hyde associate, I think it's fair to say it's dishonest. Maybe. Possibly. I, like, right now, maybe. If it's been established that this is, like, a, a guy who does this as his job, probably. Characterization of Gamergate as a hate group, clearly a gross misrepresentation. Putting it in the same category as a group like the Proud Boys supposedly trivializes the danger actually posed by these real hate groups. Wu's presentation in this video of her being disowned and left to fend for herself, impoverished and desperate by her adoptive parents. Her adoptive parents gave her $200,000 to make a newspaper cartoon and to go to college. That is a... a, a that's that's a that's a, a launching start. Most people can't don't even dream of. Most people have to go to like full time university and work at Walmart to pay their way through. Hey, I'm I'm sorry. It's also slightly misleading from what we can tell. Wu was around thirty years old when she lost contact with her adoptive parents. The idea that you would can you go without hearing yourself talk for more than ten seconds? You can go watch the original video yourself. Fuck off. Struggle to fend for yourself. What, 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 what do you what do you think this is about? And I'm not just talking, I'm, I'm, I'm challenging stuff, and I'm investigating the sources behind it. Well, will have a good enough job to stay out of poverty after being raised in massive privilege and given hundreds of thousands of dollars to fail at creating businesses repeatedly, and fail to get a degree for 10 years is frankly absurd, and speaks to Wu's total incompetence and proclivity to fail upwards. Regardless, Wu lost- It's not wrong the Democratic primary in 2018 in a landslide victory by Stephen Lynch and suspended a 2020 run. Here's what makes me mad about this, okay? So look, do, we, do I still have the article up? Hang on. So, I'm just going to bring this up again. Brianna Wu. Congressional run. This is the Kotaku article we were looking at earlier. Okay. This is what makes me mad. When you're running for Congress, you are running for a position in which you are having an impact on the lives of a very great number of people, okay? And amidst accusations from coworkers and employees that she is extremely lazy and will be disingenuous about the reasons for why she fires you if the project goes over time because of her incompetence, she says... Our campaign raised almost $200,000, and truth be told, I did not put nearly the amount of work into this that I should have. You're not allowed to run for Congress and then admit that you didn't put in the amount of work that you should have. You're allowed to fail because you were stupid. You're allowed to fail because you were arrogant, because you chose a losing strategy. 
because it was just it, it was it was it was a long shot and in, in, in the entire way through there was just no like may, maybe it was hopeless you're allowed you're allowed to lose for a lot of reasons except for this one you're not allowed to lose because you were lazy that's unforgivable imagine if this person like imagine if this person won and uh and 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 then didn't put enough work in when she was in like that's that's not good either now who's who's the person she lost against maybe he was worse anyways but like this is this is gross this is gross this is this is her political experience she ran for congress you just couldn't couldn't be fucking bothered to to do it well because she just didn't care just didn't care this isn't for Trent Lott. This is this is different. This is when she ran for Congress, but before but her political experience before that was uh, fundraising or or going door to door. I don't know what exactly she was doing for for Trent Lott, who who apparently is a pro segregationist right up into the two thousands. What is this? Oh, I see. This is Brianna Wu Dust. So this is her posing. Look, as somebody with an extremely dusty bookshelf, I'm... Oh, dear God. Wow. That's like sawdust. Damn. Look, look, look at the finger marks there. Dear God. Anywho, not important, just like someone told me to Google Brianna Wood Dust. See you, Brooks. Never appearing on the ballot. Subsequently, Aaron Chenk Yuga of the Young Turks co founded the. Yeah, exactly, Pippa. I did politics, but half assed it. Yeah, I'm not voting for that. Yeah. Rebellion PAC in 2020 to run anti Trump ads and encourage progressive voters. So, what has Rebellion PAC been involved in? Well,. People who have been around my channel may have heard of it in another place. That being the Twitch channel of panel host Wick TV. This is notable as we made the decision to sponsor two Wick streams via Rebellion Pack. One being a debate panel on whether contraception is good or bad for society. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to yet another... I think the Rebellion Pack did more than that. Let's, let's see what else the Rebellion Pack did. Rebellion pack activities. God, I just realized I've left my guest waiting for a long time. Hang on. What what has Rebellion Pack done? What has Rebellion Pack done? Ugh. Rebellion pack independent expenditures. Is this what we're looking for? Select a cycle, 2018. Um, that's 2016. 2018. What are independent expenditures and communication costs? Um, 2022? Oh, here we go. Now we got something. For Democrats, $230,000. Against Republicans, $9,000. This is for her um, support for Nina Turner, so $229,000 for that. $469 for John Ossoff, that's sad. Um, 
Okay. I see. Yes, yeah, so they've done. He's. I don't see specifics here, but it seems. I, I if I'm reading this correctly, let me check chat to see if I'm I'm not reading this correctly. It it seems like they've been doing much more than than just stuff like the wick panel. So I don't think that's necessarily fair. It's still a frivolous use of funds. Especially since it seems like she gave more to Wick for those panels than than they did to some campaigns, if that's what those numbers mean. We made the decision to sponsor two Wick streams via Rebellion Pack. One being a debate panel on whether contraception... The pack sent, spent $27,000 on a 20-second TV ad for Nina Turner. She told Chud this. ...is good or bad for society. Okay, hello everyone. And welcome to yet another episode of WIC TV, a cross ideological space where we come together to talk about issues from political. Okay, here's my issue with this. WIC, go get your bag, King. I don't care. He's, WIC's a businessman. He's out there to fend for himself. His only obligation is to the prosperity of his channel to do so in a minimally decent way by his lights. I don't care about that. Here's what I care about. If Brianna Wu is posturing as a pragmatic, reasonable, enlightened leader for the left. She knows what's best for you. Why on earth is she blowing money to motivate somebody to do something they would already do for free because it's already in their personal interest? Why? Wick does panels like this for free. He gets paid for them already by his channel. His success is tied to the success of his channel. So what Brianna uh, paid for uh, was, was two, two events. It was a panel on contraception and a debate on contraception between Vosh and some complete rando. And in the middle of it, Brianna Wu was able to insert herself and talk to Vosh as like a chum and go like, what are we supposed to do about people like bagels? It, it, was, it was pretty embarrassing. But more to the point, in what universe is, is Wick going to refuse a debate involving Vosh? None. In what universe is he going to refuse a debate involving anyone with, with any with any following? No way in hell. That's his bread and butter. So when Brianna Wu, in, in her pragmatic wisdom, gives Wick however much money she did, she is throwing it into the sea. So it's like, what good is your political experience when the only thing you do is either support fucking segregationists or nothing <laughs> you see how it doesn't make any sense to cultural from the silly to the serious uh today is our first sponsored stream this debate series is brought to you by rebellion pack rebellion is a progressive pack led by brianna Wu, focused on communication and strategic alliances across the political divide Rebellion believes that we can't solve problems without talking to each other about them, and we strongly support the mission of WIC TV. And the other... He was asking the panelists the other day, what's your favorite mental illness? ...in a debate between leftist streamer Vosh and a smaller Catholic streamer called Bagel about abortion. Welcome to yet another episode of WIC TV. So you're saying we should take away all of WIC's money? No. What I'm saying is that Brianna Wu is... is being incredibly frivolous by giving Wick hundreds and hundreds of dollars to do something he would already do for free. There's no purpose. Like, look, oh, let, let, me, let me find the numbers again, okay? So, like, look at this. Rebellion Pack. Independent expenditures. So when I pull this up, and I look at 2022, okay? Look at this. Against Republicans in 2022. $9,100. Let's say she gave Wick 500 for for one of those panels. That's a big dent. That's a lot of that gone. Right? A lot of this thing here, that's just gone. And not necessarily against Republicans. You don't necessarily achieve any of your goals because they're, they're panels. It's distinctly possible Wick stacks them with incompetence on the progressive side. That's actually fairly typical for him. So what she is in effect, potentially doing, is allocating funds from Rebellion Pack to the favor of Republicans. 
that's pretty fucking stupid. You know? Like, that's dumb. Whatever this... I, I don't know how to read this. I, this is like... Anyway, whatever. Across ideological space where we come together to discuss issues both political and cultural, from the silly to the serious. Gang, we got a good one for you today. Uh, this debate... Sorry, let me rephrase that. What are the top three most entertaining mental illnesses? That's what we asked the panel. Series is the second in a two-part series sponsored by Rebellion Pack. President Sunday blames the cost of these sponsorships was somewhere around or just below a thousand dollars. I do not. I said it's over eight hundred. She spent. I don't know if I'm allowed to say how. Hey, much. that's she me. Spent a lot of money over, over eight hundred dollars. Let's say, on getting. Let's on say tentative. That's important. Getting Wick to host a debate between Vosh and Bagels, and it's like. Wick would have done this for free. You may be wondering why these sponsorships are significant. Well, they appear to be a pretty clear violation of Twitch's terms of service, which disallow any paid promotion of a political figure, party, or debate. When confronted on this by Chad Logic, Wu attempted to reframe it as not actually being a sponsorship, despite the fact that Wick explicitly referred to it as a sponsorship in the titles of both streams. I've gotten some money. I've been working on uh, actually paying some streamers to do democratic organizing uh, behind the scenes, right? This is utterly routine. All kinds of people are paid for stuff. I believe streamers should be paid for organizing, right? I'm trying to bring some new revenue streams into the space. He's going after me. Uh, that one stop. Oh, she's talking about me here. I forgot about this. Yeah, isn't that against the rules? Ones. Isn't that against, wait, no, no, isn't that against TOS? I don't think you could do political organizing on these platforms, can you? Yeah, of course you can. Why Why couldn't you? Oh, well, on Twitch. I, I don't understand. Um, I thought that there was rules about sponsorships that you couldn't... Sunday's Canadian, right? Hundreds of dollars must be, must be more impressive in Canada. No, no, the, the, it's actually, it's, it's not hundreds. Um, but in any case, the, the issue once again is the Super PAC has a limited number of funds to allocate, right? We know this because they don't allocate the same high number of funds to every candidate. They, they run out. They have to budget. Um, Brianna Wu takes home a sizable check, I'm given to understand. So when you allocate funds, let's say a thousand bucks to something, that's maybe a tenth of, of the budget that of, of something else. That something else that maybe could have directly benefited, that maybe would have if supported directly benefited your movement, is now less funded basic like it, it's a it's a really basic judgment call do i blow a thousand dollars making somebody do something they would already have done for free or do i do literally anything else with it take uh... well it's not it's not sponsorship necessarily to um you know like i don't go and say hey please make this video please do x please do y it's more like um, you know, paying people to come, like, organize on issues, to talk about the content that we think is effective, to put that out, that kind of thing. Wu well, seems to have decided, after this talk with Chad, change venue. Instead, it seems CounterPoints will be the new beneficiary of Rebellion Pack funding. Hang on, is it is it Rebellion Pack funding? Has she said so? I like Twitch politics quite a bit, but I feel like it often devolves into trashy reality TV. I want to make a modern crossfire and invite serious people on to have a serious conversation. Let me see if I can't find the clip very quickly, and then we'll call it for here. Let's see. So when I go onto my channel, I go onto live, I go a little while back. Um, counterpoints, daddy issues. Here's a here. Ow! Oh God. Okay. So let's see here. Give me a sec. Um. So I want the transcript, and I want.
Oh my god, come on. Yeah, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. This is counterpoints. This is the person Brandon was now working with, okay? Admit that we operate in a political landscape in which it is like... It was normal a year and a half ago for, you know, uh, no, and I know some of y'all are friends with this person, so I'm not trying to talk too much shit, but like, you know, Doe, they had or a very hard upbringing, and uh, that correlates to some p behavior that I would say is negative. I would judge it as negative. Why don't you and, be specific? Uh, what are you referring to? Well, I would say participating in, like, vor fetishism and going by it, its pronouns and... Uh, potentially drug use and all that kind of stuff i would i would consider that bad yeah so it's like it, it, it's it's actually just predatory at this point like i'm sorry as Wu has announced a left versus right panel show with him Seemingly hosted on YouTube instead this time. So, where are we now? Well, Brianna Wu is starting to use her newfound connections in the Twitch politics sphere to run an image rehabilitation campaign and get away from a history of scandals and lies. It also seems that even Destiny will be teaming up with Rebellion Pack canvassing efforts in the next American general election. With rumors circulating, this will involve a united front between Destiny, Vosh, and Keffels. Numerous streamers have That's interesting. Is there a source for that? I've allowed her on their platform to continue downplaying her lies and involvement in smearing others. Nobody seems to have bothered to familiarize themselves with her history. I guess, I guess. Erudite even decided to host an interview with her that's primary purpose seems to have been to make her more palatable to an audience of people who may have had the sense something was off about Wu, but did not have the requisite years of knowledge Quite put that no, no, look, look, as somebody with no love for Erudite whatsoever, she's done the humanizing thing with a few people, and it's it's just a, it's the name of her interview show. She's just humanizing them by interviewing them. It's not she's running interference and whitewashing them. That's unfair. They're boring ass interviews, though. Run it. Hopefully, this video will provide a digestible and watchable. Okay, so apparently, there's rumors that Keffels is going to be working with. Uh, Destiny and Brianna, and presumably by extension with people like Counterpoints through Rebellion Pack. So I, I, I would like to see evidence of this. I haven't seen evidence. The video only claims it's rumors, but I haven't... I need something more substantial. But that's weird. That's weird. I would like to see who said that. What is Vor? Do, do, Do's not into Vor. Do's into something else, but that doesn't matter. <sighs> Anyways. History. Erudite even decided to quite put their finger on it. Hopefully, this video will provide a digestible and watchable record of some of the controversies and history Brianna Wu has been involved in. Okay, we get the idea. Well, that was educational in a freaking messed up way. Um, I didn't know a bunch of this stuff. The Gamergate defense was garbage. There was... He, he, he did he did expose some things, though, so I guess well done there. God damn. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't think Keffels can even do that, considering she's living in Ireland currently. Well, it depends if she's doing it like Wick, right? If she's receiving funds, for example. 
Um, or, or maybe she's just doing promotion. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't. I don't know what that looks like. I, I, I find that hard to believe simply because Destiny is actively going after Vosh for his takes on that um, that Oliver person, the guy who did the song. He, he released something, I think, earlier today or yesterday um, talking about his insane, deranged, unhinged takes on that or something. So I find that... Don't she and Steven hate each other? Yeah, but look at it this way, okay? Brianna Wu has gone out of her way to whitewash the characters of people like Counterpoints and Destiny. Um, someone like Rose Wrist lost their White Forest account immediately and was ostracized from the community for merely editing the document that Destiny published against Keffels. So there's an element of cynicism here. This is one of the things I'm finding kind of disturbing. There seems to be a willingness to deploy really gross double standards if the person in question is a famous person that Keffels wants to network with. Okay, I haven't seen Vosh do anything of the sort, he seems to be relatively innocent on that front. Um, but, like, it, it, it's, it reminds me of the Keemstar thing. Keemstar is an eminently more toxic actor than a lot of the people who have been ostracized from Keffel's community. She get, gets him on screen for two hours to let him whitewash his history in front of her audience, deeply confusing them, humiliating them in the process. And, and that's that. Why? Because it gets her rich and famous. Is that all she does? No, but that's, like... There's a there's a recklessness here when people sniff money. That's that's the fundamental problem. And it's going to bite us all in the ass in a bad way, like really bad. Because at the moment what people like Brianna Wu are doing is they're using their influence in order to purge people from those communities or have their 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 needs and their views discredited um, who represent an inconvenience for them. It is inconvenient for someone like Cenk Uygur, for example, to have to be on the side of weirdos with non-binary identities that, that conservatives just cannot see eye to eye concerning. Um, that's just too far for them. And this is one of the problems when you have people buying their way into positions of authority in your movement, and you're naive about letting them because they're famous celebrities on your side, quote-unquote, giving them a free pass and just uh, deferring to their judgment because if they are in it for ulterior reasons and we know the ulterior reasons they become extremely wealthy doing it then when the wind changes and they cease getting wealthy doing it when that no longer it, it presents an obvious benefit an obvious way upwards you're relying on their character to hold them in place but that's never been tested before so yeah The Rosewrist stuff was dumb. I was also critical of him for that, but the, the removal of his, his page was dumb. I can't remember what, what side I took with respect to that, but it, it breaks faith with the community when you have people making arbitrary, tyrannical decisions without reason and without explanation or just cause. That makes people not trust the leadership in a movement. That's bad. Anyways. Um... Let me see if uh, our guest is still available. Oh. What the hell? <laughs> Hang on. I can't show you this. I can't show you this. But like... Oh my god. <laughs> okay, this is Brianna Wu. I can't show you the article because it's, it's under her dead name. But this is from 1998, okay? Quote... I wasn't really shocked by any of the sexual content of the Star Report, but with the media still trying to decide if Clinton actually lied, what does it actually take to commit perjury anyway, they have missed one critical fact. Monica Lewinsky is a whore. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's Brianna Wu in 1998. Ugh. Oh my god. 
That's oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, that's funny. It's an article called Monica Monica Gate is devastating to feminism. Anyways. Yeah. Oh my uh I won't don't worry. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hang on. What is this? I'm not even talking about that, dear God. Um, but yeah. 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 Well. <laughs> okay. All right. Sunday, would you be interested in chatting with the author of the Woo video? I have a guest waiting in the aisles, so not tonight. Another time. Oh, man. Alright. I'm going to be right back, guys. We're going to move on. I have, uh, I have a guest who's been waiting very patiently for a long time. You would not believe the shit I've just seen. I can't even. I can't even. I need to actually get it off my screen right now. Um. Fuck. Alright. I'll be right back in a little while, folks. A couple minutes. We're gonna have the, uh... The snarky religious kid, apparently, from uh, the Hunter Avalon debate we covered a little a couple days ago. Um, on to chat. Was that a couple days ago? Was that last night? I can't remember. But we're going to have him on to chat anyway, so we're going to see how that goes. Probably not for super long. I think we've made him wait for a long time, but yeah. Be right back.
for the delay folks okay we have a caller coming I'm not going to spend a super long time here but we're going to chat for a little bit can't hear you if you're trying to speak, just so you know. We're making no noise at all. Hello? You are inaudible, sir. Can't hear you. Uh, Volt, you there? Hello? Oh, it might be ending early after all. I'll tell you what, we've been going for three and a half hours, Volt. I'll, uh, I'll bring you on another day, okay? We'll, we'll have lots of time. Anytime you like. It's your connection? Yeah, fair enough. Alright, that's that's totally okay. We'll um we'll do another day. That's fine. Alright, Demon Mama's streaming finally. She's back from vacation, so I'm gonna send you that way. Remember to tell her that the squids Wait, that Sunday sent you because you are the squid. I'm I'm so tired. Okay, Demon Mama. All right, here we go. Tell him Sunday sent you. Re 